Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Welcome to 4Player Podcast. This is episode 599. It is May 2nd, 2019, and my name is Nick Henderson. I am joined this evening by Brad Simons. What's up? Nolan Hedstrom. How's it going, everybody? And Christopher Davis. Hello, hello. Uh, it is a big week, I guess. Kind of not, not a huge week. We got we got a new release, or two new releases. We're going to talk about Days Gone. We're going to talk about SteamWorld Quest, uh, among other things. There's a ton of news to talk about in the second segment, so... We have plenty to talk about this evening. Um, before we do that, I have a couple things I want to... I have a list of things I want to mention real quick. Uh, first and foremost, I want to congratulate Carlos. Because Carlos, as of this past weekend... It's finally an adult. ...is a married man. Are we certain? Th- yes. Is there Bra- evidence? Brad was there. Yeah, you, you went to a karaoke party. Show no, me the he, marriage no. certificate. No, he went to Show the, me the marriage certificate and the ring. You have a backwards. You don't have to get a ring to get married. I went, married to, I went to the day. wedding. He went to the actual wedding. I think Crispy went to yeah, the karaoke my, party. I take my kid home. Pretty sure so, Crispy was at the wedding too. Yeah, Crispy was at the All wedding. Right. Based so, on the photo, it is that a thing. Went out and I just need third Crispy's party confirmation. It is a thing that happened. Congratulations, Carlos. Carlos is a married man. Oh my god. This could be the start of like the longest con. Of his I, life. It, you know, you're not wrong. It could happen. This is Carlos we're talking about. But with that said, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say congratulations. Congratulations, Carlos. Congratulations, Carlos. On your marriage. Uh, hopefully we can have him on the show in the not too distant future. I know scheduling has been kind of a bitch with Carlos, but that leads me to my second point. He's uh, just being a bitch. He, <laughs> well, yeah, That's I'm your very, second point, Carlos is being a bitch. Second, second bullet point here, I think I actually wrote it down. Carlos is being a bitch. Yes. Um, no, but seriously, in the month of May, we're going to be, it's going to be another one of those months where we're going to podcast, uh, I think the next three shows, is it three or four? Three. Four. Four? Yeah. The next four shows, so starting next week, we're going to do podcasts on Tuesday nights instead of Thursday nights. Just want to make you all aware of this change. So after tonight, we're going to do a podcast again in about four days. So, wait, is it four? Four? Math? I don't know math. Anyways, next Tuesday we'll be doing another podcast, and we'll be doing that for about four weeks. So just wanted to make you aware of that. I also want to remind everybody that we're still doing uh, Devil May Cry 3 as part of the Revival Club, so it's not too late if you want to jump in there and play that game. Um, I meant to play a lot of it last week, but I ended up getting like really sucked into days gone which i'll be talking about here shortly um but there's still time to play it so we'll be playing it for the most of the month of may i believe as well and i'm gonna be posting another poll here soon for the next episode because we have we've narrowed it down to four choices Mm -hmm. for the next revival club Sukadin 2 is obviously on there already because it it was a runner-up for our last poll. people aren't gonna vote for that because they suck it was the runner-up last month that's why it gets automatically meant featured on the next it's poll. gonna be the runner-up every what, what, month what else what if, yeah, what <laughs> every if it is? single time the other three the, the other three games on the poll for the next revival club dark cloud 2 okay great fucking game vanquish okay and vampire the masquerade bloodlines oh that's gonna win that probably is gonna win but you know what i think any one of those choices is very though. exciting you know it's the most relevant it is the most relevant so i have a feeling that might that'll come out on top but i'm gonna be getting that poll up hopefully tomorrow so we'll see how that goes and we'll run it throughout the month uh but yeah we'll still be playing devil may cry 3 for most of the month and we do have a discord channel open for that so if you're a supporter of us on patreon at the level three tier or higher three dollars a month uh you can jump in there and talk about it and then you'll be able to contribute towards the discussions we eventually have on the podcast about said game um also i want to for our supporters on patreon we'll let you know if you're at the ten dollar tier or higher i have caught up on mugs mugs are shipped out ordered a bunch of mugs this week i ordered three more today for new ten dollar patrons this morning so a lot of you will be getting mugs in the next uh three or four days hopefully why are you smiling at me like that i'm just i'm just like all these delightful people are getting mugs and We've never had Well, it's funny. You mentioned that, Chris Davis. I actually ordered one for all of us, and they came in today, but I didn't go home after work. So you'll, be ha- you'll have them on Tuesday. Yes, we will be sporting our own four-player podcast mugs next week. I was going to try and surprise you, but... Well, we're going to have to drink out of them and make a yes, whole thing of it on Tuesday. we will be drinking various beverages out of our four-player podcast mugs. So, it's just ooh, a mug. It is. 
Hey, it's a nice it's, mug, man. I drink it's out of the our mug. I drink out of that mug every day. It's pretty. Is it a self spin? Is it a self mixing mug? Are they self mixing? Self stirring mug? No, it's not magic. They make those. They make mugs. Correct. That they stir. do. And the last thing I want to mention is that <clears throat> we are going to be recording a bonus podcast here in the next couple of days, hopefully over the weekend, uh, where we're going to be talking about, of course, Avengers Endgame, which a lot of people have seen. I think most of us here in the room have seen it. Uh, we'll be recording a podcast on, I'm thinking, Saturday night. But um, we are, of course, looking to our supporters on Patreon. and Twitch. Crispy's going to be on the podcast, Crispy but he, is he didn't the watch podcast. the last 15 minutes of the movie, so it's going to be... What? Inter- that's, a, that's it's like a, like with Red Dead. Oh, wow! <laughs> oh, I finally listened story. to that whole podcast. It's so frustrating. Oh, <laughs> that he didn't yeah. finish it. Yeah, because you can you can hear the sighs of disappointment when things come up, and he's like, "Oh, damn!" And you can hear him like beating himself up. How far did he get? <laughs> he got to spoilers? like he's like two or three missions away from the end of the actual game game game. But he, there's still fucking like two epilogues that I know, like, but, have but, good content. But in he there. could have at least got to the end of yes. Arthur's story. But you know what? He was on the show and we had good discussions and we told him we're going to be spoiling some shit. We gave him so much time to finish. He didn't finish it, but I think maybe we... He had nearly six months. He had Yes, he had nearly six months to finish that game. And you could you could hear it that he was like so disappointed when we started spoiling stuff That's for him. Weird. But uh, it was a good discussion nonetheless. But yeah, like I said, if you're a supporter on Patreon or a subscriber on Twitch, you can jump into Discord, into the supporters or into the 4Player Plus channel if you want to... Uh, ask us a question or leave a comment or a theory about about the Avengers or the MCU post in game. Uh, there's also a post on Patreon, patreon.com slash four player if you want to leave if you want to leave it there. And we will of course be using those questions to kind of guide us through those that podcast when we have that discussion. So anyways, without further ado, let's jump into this. I have a little bit of feedback from our last episode. Not a whole lot tonight, so um Drew327 says Oh, this sucks too because Crispy wasn't here, and we, that was the whole conversation we had about dreams, mm, where he yep. was like struggling to get it, couldn't comprehend it. Uh, so this might go, this might fall on deaf ears. I, I'm sorry, but sounds such a dumb conversation. <laughs> True yep. three two seven. So apparently not. It inspired a very long question or a comment. Uh, I've been following the Media Molecule Twitch YouTube channels for about a year now. Definitely look up some of their archives to see how creation works. Crispy's confusion makes sense. Most people just don't know what this is. I know Twitch viewership isn't everything, but seeing less than 100 viewers watching Dreams makes me sad. Uh, maybe someone creating is just not very watchable. Uh, it's basically Little Big Planet to the nth power. Little Big Planet gave you materials to work with, like one type of wood, for example. In Dreams, you make the initial shape and tweak the properties of it to make any kind of color or wood grain combination you can think of. Infinite wood, uh, but it's also like Little Big Planet where you can just browse the Dreamiverse for already created things and just stamp, uh, and just stamp them in your creation. It will give credit to the original creators when you do that. Uh, there's no VR support yet, but I can say creating with the Move controller is far superior to using the DualShock, at least for sculpting purposes. Setting up logic or making music is totally fine with the DualShock. Um, also, you must see the music creation tools; they're insane. I feel like that comment in and of itself still kind of barely scratches the surface of what, but it, yeah. he does make some pretty, I think, important distinctions here about being able to, instead of just having one type of wood, for instance, you'd be able to create your own custom one and then people can take that and use it in their own stuff. And that eventually ends up, that's you'll, you'll eventually end up with this like huge universe of content that is just using all kinds of people's material and like yeah it's just going to keep expanding getting people bigger just keep and bigger. releasing content packs with like yeah and that's things that's super exciting is it is that really the case are people is there like only 100 people watching dream streams on twitch i mean he i i believe he said that when they're creating um so i wouldn't be surprised that like when someone's just like making a level yeah maybe less people are interested in the final outcome because making a level can be i don't want to say tedious but i mean so you you, you oh let me place this thing here and do this and oh it actually doesn't work that way i need to reconfigure the. it and has so, like I mean, a built-in i guess you're right it has like a built-in like the people who are going to watch those streams are the people who probably keenly have an interest in like game design exactly some form. Yeah. if you don't if you're not interested in that you just want to get it's, it's the, a little niche yeah. watching the creation of levels yeah 
playing the levels is different just because that's a bunch of variety and you can interact with different things and you get a, it's like a variety show yeah. watching someone stream that but i can understand not really being into watching someone create the but, levels but that being said like you know <laughs> other you know creation games like mario maker for example because you had that instant feedback and be able to instantly play your and level. you also have the instant also, familiar, familiarity. familiarity it was like so much more i'm pretty sure in dreams you can instantly play the level you can yeah okay but you also you have in like little uh, Mario Maker you have that built-in familiarity with Mario that is going to draw yeah. people in regardless. And and Mario Maker has a set amount of rules, so it's always a two D. It's always you know gravity based. You got a third person did, character did on Mar- there. So Mario Maker Two is coming out. This is kind of mm-hmm. off topic. Are they introducing like three D Mario stuff? No, not to my knowledge. No, okay. it, it's still two D. Yeah. But they're they're adding just a lot of new content. A lot of new yeah, content. a lot yeah. of new ways you can do this stuff. Yeah. Um, our last comment this week comes from Piosht. Uh, he says when they originally sh- originally showed the trailer for Persona Five Royale or Royal mm-hmm. Royal Royale? I don't know. Um, I wasn't too excited because it looked like what I expected. After thinking about it, I'm looking forward to it because I hope that adding a third semester will fix the problems I had with the game's characters and their development. He doesn't really go into much more detail about that, so I'm not really sure what his problems with the characters or development were. Okay. If I had finished the game, I probably would have a better idea of that. Uh, Brad, you did say. Uh, in Discord this past week, that if I ever take the time to finish Persona Five, you will it will forever give me a pass with you. You will no longer. Hmm? Do you remember saying this? You were like, I, you I will, don't remember you the second never, part. You will never bust my balls for being into <laughs> games oh, like oh, Days oh, like, Gone, like, like bloated open world games where you're doing the same yes. shit for sixty hours. When you know the, the real thing is, I mean, the real issue I have is is you seem like so into like Persona. Same thing happened with Four, right? And then yeah. you just sort of I got about twenty hours into playing, both which, those four you know, five. hey, we've all done that with games, but like, but it wasn't because I wanted to stop playing Persona Five. Like you finished Assassin's you, you, Creed you, Odyssey, Nick. It's never you want to stop playing it. It's just other games come out, then you get hooked on those, and yeah. then you stop playing it, and then yeah. another game comes out, and yeah. then another game no, comes. I mean, out, it happens to everyone, but it's just that you hate all the Japanese ones. Ooh! Oh! Wow! Shots fired! But I mean, it's just, I, I mean, like if you, if anyone's gonna play any JRPG, right? Yeah. Like. Persona is like the flashiest Did you finish fucking five, one. Brad? No, I, I haven't finished oh. any Persona game. I, oh, okay. But, Look at this guy over but the here. Difference is, I, the difference is I actively don't like Persona. Oh, okay. This oh, guy, no. when he plays it, he's like in love with it. I am, yes. You know, you love Persona you know 3 what? and you fucking finished Fuck it. Fuck you, Brad. I'm going to play some Persona 5 this weekend. I'm gonna Do throw, it, man. I'm going to throw it on the pile on top of Days Gone and I mean, fucking many, Devil May Cry 3. No, you don't have to. Look, look you've, gonna you've do finished. It all. I mean, I'm, no, I'm serious. Robin's out of town this weekend. I'm probably just going to do nothing, but I'm probably not going to put on pants this weekend. I'm probably just going to sit around and play video games like all weekend long. I know. It's just, so I mean, it's, probably, it's weird because then on camera and you got, you know, I saw the same no thing happen with Persona 4 and, and you know, what I don't want to happen is in two years, like I'm going to do it. I'm going to start all over. Don't start all over, man. Just load that save. You're right. You're right. Finish the game. Yeah, I think I think starting all over is kind of a it would would almost kind of stop you from playing it more. Um, I mean, I finished three and four. I never finished five. The same reason other How games about, came did out. Did you were you when you say you finished four? Did you play it for like hundred hours or more, or did you like just plow through the story and finish in like fifty Probably or sixty? Probably like. Yeah. See, I, I played like, a shit. Ton I of love four. Persona, but that's kind of like. I would love to finish Persona 5, but I kind of wish I could just fucking beeline it I mean, and still get the I think to experience. an extent you can. Dude, it's hard because like, there's a lot of stuff to do. I, I just I game. did like interacting with the people and, find, and finishing stories. Yeah, you got to do all the like social that. links. Yeah, yeah all, man, finishing all the social, social links and stuff like that. But I mean, like, I never finished 5 either, and don't get me wrong. It was kind of like I was talking with you earlier. Uh, I, every time I was playing 5, I was loving it. And then afterwards, I was like, "Shit, I want to play 5. But then, and the year happened, and then more games came out, it's, and then it's, this. Persona and, Five is one of those games where you like, once you put it down, it's like it's overwhelming to think about jumping back into it. But once you jump back into it, once you let it happen, you're in. You're good. Five didn't have pro enhancements, famously, right? Famously, what? yeah. Like you know, the the pro had been out for at least a year, and like it didn't have any enhancements. Oh, with uh, the system. I think it. I I think what you're thinking of is that it didn't have any patches, like. I, I played that game. Did it have any patches? I don't think Did so. Did it need pro enhancements? Well, I popped that I mean, game. I was wondering. I, it I, didn't I, have any patches because by the time they released it here in the oh, States, yeah. they'd already patched it. Because oh, they came yeah, out in Japan yeah, like yeah. a year earlier. Oh. A year earlier. So I don't yeah, know if that makes point. it famous. Also, but, that was on a, on the PS3 as well. I mean, that doesn't seem wait, like Wait, on a 5? Yeah. What? It does, you it can play it only in Japan. Oh, okay. I th- well, I mean, definitely somewhere. Yes, it was on the PS3. 
I thought yeah. it came out here. Interesting. As well. I'm just wondering if Royale is going to have like you know HDR oh, and 4K work. enhancements. And I don't think that, it needs so. it. Like the, the like, I mean, no, it doesn't necessarily need it because of the the style in which it's yeah. Because the HDR isn't going to make it more vibrant than it already is. Holy said, shit, I it is would vibrant. Like to see that. Sure, why not? Um, real quick before we get into the impressions we're actually here to talk about, we did play a little bit of Mortal Kombat 11 before the show. How are y'all feeling about Mortal Kombat 11? It's Man. certainly Mortal Kombat-y. Yeah. yeah. Very accurate. Yeah, you said, Brad, you said you were going to try and play some of the story mode. Yeah, I mean, I, I started it, but I was I was kind of trying to play it while Henry was around. Not like, just sort of like playing in the room, but he keep looking over at the TV and I'd be like, Fuck. Is, is he, I, I don't know anything. I really about, need to do my fatal blow or I don't I'm know anything. Lose. I don't know anything about small humans. Or is, it, is he already at the like impressionable, like he should. If you see something fucked up, yeah, he's going to know it's fucked up. Yeah, he's definitely up. probably shouldn't be watching it. Gotcha. All right, well. Although he just kind of stares at it blankly. I don't think he really knows what's going on. But he's finally getting... There's been a couple of movies recently where he'll get to, like, moments and he'll get, like, upset. Yeah. We Oh, <laughs> uh, have you have you seen any of the what we do in the Shadows TV the show? show? I haven't watched it yet. Okay, no. so we were, we were watching the TV show and there is... Oh well, I guess if no one's seen it, I've been wa- watching it. And is it good? Yeah, yeah. Every, I, good. A bunch of my coworkers have been watching it. Yeah. They've said it's the good. trailers it's make it's it look so hilarious. similar to like the movie, but there's with different characters, yeah. like that tone. But like one of the funny things they have is like one of the vampires is an energy vampire. Yeah, and re- he. Oh, you should have been watching it. Well, he was in the trailer where he's like talking the guy's ear okay, off in yeah, the yeah, office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he got into a fight with like an emotional vampire and they're basically just like floating in the air. One was trying to bore the other one. The other one was trying to make the other one sad. And like, it really upset Henry. <laughs> and usually he doesn't react like that. It's like he was getting really upset. I'm like, oh man, we we're, it's going to get to that point where we're watching like Disney movies and, and there's like the scary shark or whatever. We each have to like fucking turn it off, which is obnoxious, but you know, your 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 range of movies you're gonna be able to watch is gonna slowly yeah, start it's, to dwindle. It's, yeah, <laughs> yep. you're right. It is for a, for a period of time at least. Even the ones made for kids. Yeah. Um. We want to do Alamo for all soon, but I kind of I can't do it for Avengers. That's just oh no no. no. E- even though they they have it, but like it's a three, three hour hours, movie. Three hours of the kid. It's a and three it's, hour it's movie. Just so much. I yeah. just want everybody to know that I went in there with a plan, and I had to pee thirty minutes into that movie. Like, so, like it was it was i was like i'm gonna make it through half the movie and i'll be good nope i had to pee 30 minutes in so then i peed and then i didn't have to pee for the rest of the movie quite the story so this is yeah. what i did nick that because we saw it at 9 30 at night yeah so at dinner that night i had like four sips of water yeah um, and then I we was went being to, very we, careful about how much we went to the movie, and I ordered a pretzel. Yeah, <laughs> just to dry salt. you up. Yeah. Just give me all the salt you have. <laughs> so, so I ate the pretzel, and I did order a water, and I literally had like maybe because you know they give you a glass. Yeah. And by the end of the movie, there was like that much missing from the glass because it yeah. took a couple of sips. Uh, but yeah, I didn't have to pee the whole movie. Uh, got well, home, fucking, fucking felt control. horrible just because I was like super dehydrated. Yeah. Like it just felt horrible. Yeah, that's wonderful. I I ate at the movie and I had like three sodas and I was just fine. You are a man among men, Chris Davis. I I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what I to tell I'm you. I think I'm a it normal was, person. You know what? No, you're, I mean I don't think that's the case. Why? It's a big it's a big conversation topic. People are like, when do I go pee during the Avengers? It's that's not more just, of a joke than a conversation topic. Is it really a joke? I uh, Chris Davis, really I think joke. peeing on a regular basis is a healthy bodily function. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did go pee. I remember I reading that article about these are the best times to go pee, and I was like, I heard the the cue, and it's like well, I'm going, and, and I went. Is it a non spoilery cue? It there it is a line that without context means nothing. What's the line? The line is uh, prepare test number one. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, when gotcha, you hear gotcha. that. Boom! I guess go. that's a good that was a enough time. Sequence. Chris so, Davis peeing into your mouth and drinking it still counts as peeing. <laughs> okay. Where did that come from? I don't what? <laughs> left field. That's what left he was field. doing in the theater. Oh my goodness! What the fuck, man? Um. Okay. Ew. Anyways, we're gonna talk more about the Avengers this weekend on the bonus podcast. Let's not talk about it right now. Let's move on to actual fucking video games. No, nothing to say about Mortal Kombat 11, I guess. 
It's pretty good. I have no thoughts or opinions. You know on what? Mortal Mortal, I, oh, say oh, this. I could I could say this. Uh, Sonya Blade, shitty. What could you tell from? Oh, yeah, you know from the camp, the little campaign you played. No, Ronda Rousey. Oh, is yeah, a terrible, terrible, terrible voice actress. I think we mentioned that on the and, show. We and did. Everyone else is acting circles around. We her. did. It's, it's awful. <clears throat> But I haven't gotten very far. So. I do want to say that I think it's pretty astounding because I played Mortal Kombat 10 like in the week leading up to 11 and the kind of the graphical fidelity, like the jump in graphical fidelity from one to the next mm-hmm. is pretty impressive. Like 10 looks like, in comparison, looks pretty bad. Mortal Kombat 11, I think, is a very I mean, 10 also pretty came game. out four years ago. That is true. That is still on the same platform, same generation. I mean... So was Uncharted um, one well, and nine Last of came, Us. Nine came out on on three sixty uh, PS three. Wait, Uncharted one and Last Oh my of god, us. I keep forgetting the Last of Us was a PS three yes, game. Yes, that game came out in like yeah. twenty thirteen. I know. I keep for that's yeah. ridiculous. Nick, we were living together when the that same game came hardware. Out. Yeah, that's right. See that? That's why I don't think. You, I don't want to get back to this topic. That's why you don't need these mid console pro versions because you know, look at Ed Charter One versus The Last of Us. Developers learn how to make their games look a lot nicer and run a lot better as time goes on. You don't need more hardware to get more out of the developer. That is true. Just need the time. So speaking of video games, I played four hours of The Binding of Isaac this weekend. Mm. All right. Hey. Next hey, topic. Listen, man. Listen, man. <laughs> I, I get it now, Dude, okay? You you gotta you, get oh, because, the card game. Yeah. Wait, you get it because of Slay the Spire? Yeah, yeah. Slay the Spire is my Binding of Isaac. I get it. I get it. How many hours of Slay the Spire have you played so far? Uh, I mean, about 150. Damn. Jesus yeah. Christ, Brad. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Anyways, let's talk about video games. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to do this. I think my body is prepared. My mind is in the right f- place to talk about this. Let's talk about Days Gone. All right. Okay. Let's do it. This is a new video game. How come Sam Witwer talks so much? Okay. <laughs> I was on are your we really, stream are we going, for 15 minutes. Are we getting a little crazy? Are we coming out the gate with that? Well, so I, I, I want to like this game. So I joined Nick's stream the other day and was like, what is Days Gone really like? And then his character fucking has to comment on every goddamn thing in the everything. Okay. Like he I was, just I was constantly going, talks. I was going to mention that because okay. I think that is one of that is a gripe I have with this game. Why is it starting so late in my foot? Oh no! Why are you very, already a, dying? This is the very You're end so of my bad game. at this. I, I had that. I restart. I did that. Re-record. You're Nick. This so is bad. bad. Why is he above us? <laughs> Wow, that was the yeah. yeah there you go. There's your footage of well, days about, gone. How about I go how fix that? Can't see my head. Days gone. It should, sucks. Shouldn't it restart it automatically? Brad's gone. Nolan's gone. Days gone. <laughs> days hey, gone. Just You're Come good. on, Nick. You're good. You're good. This is the beginning what of the What happened to? Okay. All right. Days gone, guys. Days gone. Chris Davis, you got to. Days back. Chat. Day, chat. Days back. Oh my god. All right, Nick. What? Oh my god. This game. What's going on? This con. This this. Audio audio podcast. I've been slightly stressed out about having this conversation because this is obviously okay this is a new game from sony bend it's ps4 exclusive it is getting a lot of flack admittedly heard, and probably rightfully so stuff about it i mean here's the thing like i i jokingly made a discord channel for mm-hmm. this game because i was like i want to talk to people about this game but nobody's playing it uh and most people and the, what what is frustrating is that like nobody's playing it or is not getting a lot of uh, attention because it's getting in my opinion like blasted in reviews mm. maybe unnecessarily blasted like the, the, get, re- the reviews are like pretty uh average right i mean no, so it's pretty I've, okay. I've seen like fives out of ten you know what i'm saying like it's just like it's it's check okay. they released an accolade i'm not today. basing it purely off of Metacritic, but uh, you know on launch day i saw all these reviews come out and they weren't great and i was a little nervous about picking it up because I'd already decided I was going to pick this up and play it. So I wasn't really sure. I was kind of fully expecting to, to try it out for a couple hours and then end up shifting back to something else. Because I do have a lot of stuff I could be playing right now. Mm-hmm. Not amazing. It's 71 on Metacritic. Yeah. That's honestly pretty That's good. Not, I mean, That's fine. It, it, it's, yeah, as an average, it's not bad. But a lot of the big a lot of the big uh, critics out there, like, like, you know, the IGNs of the world and whatnot, are giving this some pretty pretty low scores. Why? It may be, it may be right for so. The reason for that? The, I mean, the reason for it is, and I'm going to, I'll be the first to admit this, this is, this is a open world game that does not break any ground. This is, uh, mm. it is, 
It's very it is, color it is, by numbers. It is made of is made up of components you have seen in almost every other game out there. Gotcha. Um, but and this is this came up in conversation on Discord once when I was talking about this prior to its release. I think on the day when reviews were coming out, and Brad compared, he's like, Brad said, I think Nick will be fine because it, it's giving him like Mad Max vibes. Yeah. And that was prior to release, and I loved Mad Max. If you remember, we talked about that when yeah. the year it came out. And you know what? He's right. I'm. This is Mad Max. Like Mad Max, this is a game that borrows a lot of elements from other games, but it has one or two things that sets it apart that I think are really, really well done. The two things in in particular uh, for me are is the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. I think the motorcycle is awesome, like being able to traverse the world and and this emphasis on like uh, uh, having to get, manage it and make sure that you you're keeping it maintained. Like you have to repair it if you damage it. Like if you hit a ramp and you come down at like a bad angle or something or hit a rock, it'll damage it. If you hit a fucking zombie with your motorcycle mm. too hard, it'll damage it. So you have, so you to, have like, to give it apples or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he carries <laughs> wrenches in his pocket. He's like he's a biker, so he has oh, you okay. know he's disposable wrenches. He knows how to you maintain feed it the his wrench. bike. If it makes you feel any better I mean I don't know what this make you feel Mad Max is that a 69 on Metacritic? And I think so, that's, so I think that's yeah. kind of criminal, too, because I think Mad Max was amazing because the thing that it did so well was its car combat. I, I have never enjoyed car combat in a game more than I did in Mad Max. And in this game, it's it's the combination of the motorcycle and the zombies themselves and how much of the game... Like, for one thing, zombie games, I think, obviously, are you know there's a lot of zombie games out there, mm-hmm. but there's not. A, I don't feel like there's a lot of really good like. I thought open, these weren't zombies, Nick. Well, they call them freakers. But they're fucking, they're fucking zombies. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, they remind me of the zombies in, like, 28 Days Later. Gotcha. They run okay. at you. Very, mm-hmm. And they don't necessarily, they're not, like, decomposing, but they look like just they're, fucked They're, up like, people. on meth. Yeah, I guess. But they're all... There, so- there's not a lot of open world zombie games. And I will say that there is one series that I like mm-hmm. that sort of makes me not want to play this because I haven't even played the sequel to uh, State of Decay, okay, which is a much more like systems driven. Yes, and and I, I think this got, this got a lot of comparisons early on, um, or people were saying. I think people in Discord who were talking about it saying it looks kind of like State of Decay. And at first, I can see, I could definitely see that comparison. But State of Decay is, in in reality, is kind of a totally different thing. It's like because a simulation. It's a simulation yeah. because most of the emphasis there is like on building communities and yeah. like that kind of thing. The emphasis here really is like exploring the world and. Uh, 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 Clearing out ho- like hordes of zombies from this world, and there's a, there's obviously a story going on and stuff. There's not a whole there's not really much of the the whole component of like I have to bring back stuff for my outside of like going hunting and bringing stuff back to the various camps to like build up your reputation with those camps so that mm-hmm. you can unlock new things to buy in shops. Like beyond that, there's not really any element of like supporting you know the world and like feeding your people and that kind of stuff, hmm. uh, which I feel like is a huge part of what makes State of Decay. So good, sure. Uh, and I said this, and I think I, I feel like it's, it sounds extreme, and it's not meant to, but like to me, this feels a lot like an open world Last of Us, hmm. because there is a lot of emphasis on find like ammo is very scarce. You're spending a lot of time finding uh, like bandages and stuff to make Molotov cocktails. You're crafting them on the fly in, in like in the weapon wheel, just like you would in something like Last of Us. Uh, and and ammo is like very very scarce. In fact, there's been multiple times where I've been out in the middle, of, like it's also it's the fact that it's, the ammo is so scarce, and you're also stumbling across like hordes of like a hundred zombies. Like, mm. how scarce are we talking here? <clears throat> I'm talking like well, d- depending on what, what weapon you choose to go out in, it may not be it, so. So hold hold on. In speaking of, uh huh. Uh, while I was watching you, I saw you come across like many weapons. Is there just like weapons scattered throughout the world, but they're kind of like irrelevant? I mean, or redundant you can find. Or... I mean, when you kill. When you kill like, like human, human enemies, enemies yeah. you pick up their weapons. They almost always have like two bullets, gotcha. three bullets. And like the weapon I'm using right now, which I actually really like, like I have forty bullets right now, which mm-hmm. is pretty high. Mm. From and you know when you when you get like an assault rifle, you have like a hundred bullets, but you know in a moment of panic, you could go through a hundred bullets like that. Quick, yeah. Then what what the hell? Because I'm thinking back to like that original presentation of the game. What the one and he just fucking mo- from E3 and he's fucking mowing down with hundreds of tons I mean, of bullets. I mean, I'll be I mean, I've played this. So game like, for- there's a disconnect here. I mean, I've played about to me. I've played about 20 hours of this and I still haven't come across my first like official horde. Mm, like, um, the, like the demo we saw the hundreds. Yeah, yeah, like like I haven't been like 
completely like right now actually what you're seeing in this footage right now is me coming i came across a horde randomly in the world and when i say horde it was probably like 30 zombies actually it was really like you did i didn't it happened right before i started recording which is unfortunate but i was driving down this road and i heard a noise and i slowed down and i turned the bike off and i like i was like what the fuck is that noise and i panned the camera around and you could see that train that was like on the on the uh the bridge right there and the side of the train has one of the door com the component the Parts was op open, mm -hmm. and there was just fucking zombies pouring out of it, like mm. a fucking just a waterfall of okay. zombies. And I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, and that kind of shit just happens randomly in the world. And when I was leading into this game, and when I was seeing it at like E3 and stuff, and following the footage, I was kind of under the impression that hordes were kind of like you go to a place and it tells you, "All right, eliminate this horde in this place," and it like loads into an area or whatever, and you fight the horde and then you go back out. But no, you can stumble across hordes. Just like wandering through the forest. That's mm. that's been the the sort of the bullet point since they announced this. Well, right? I know, but like the way they've been fr every time they've been showing the footage of like taking on hordes, it's always been this like one specific location, and you go to a thing, <coughs> and you have to set up these traps, and you have to like trigger it. And there was like mm -hmm. two hundred zombies, and, and, and yeah, and there's like tons, and I haven't I haven't done that yet, so I can't really comment on it. I'm tw I'm twenty hours in, and I haven't done that yet. But like That's... there are smaller hordes, which are like fifty to seven, you know, fifty to eighty zombies. Mm. They can come pouring out of caves. You can just kind of find them wandering through the the forest randomly, and that shit is terrifying. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, especially in co combination with the fact that like the mu the use of music is very subtle, so it's a very like ambient game. You're hearing a lot of just like nature and stuff. So when you, when there's a zombie nearby, even if it's like one or two, you can just kind of you can hear it usually before you can see it, mm -hmm. and that shit is scary. Like, the zombies in this game I find to be actually pretty terrifying. The f fade to black is so old okay, school. Okay, that's another... Okay, so we want to start talking about things that... that like maybe the rougher edges, because this game does have rough edges, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, one of which being, actually, to build off what you both said, Nolan, yes. I think Sam Witwer delivers a pretty impressive vocal performance in this game, mm -hmm. but he comments on fucking everything. Yeah. Everything that he, if you stop to pick something up, he's like, oh yeah, I need this. Mm -hmm. I needed this. Or, like, you pick up a gas can to fill up your 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 tank, and he's like, oh yeah, my bike was almost, almost out. And it's like, dude, I know, that's why I'm filling up the thing. You don't gotta say this every time I pick something up. It kind of drives me crazy. And sometimes, like, uh, somebody was talking to me about this, and they were like, they said they thought that there was one of those issues what do you call it where there's the character the character's portrayal doesn't really match up with the gameplay mm, in terms gotcha, of like his yeah. and i didn't see that because i think i think he's actually a pretty likable character and he's it's like taking that you know the trope of like being you know a biker dude but showing him that he has a human side he has people he cares about and stuff he's not really a bad guy i think that's great mm -hmm. but like then you would go and do like these camps where you're taking out like other these like uh other factions These or factions people, whatever or, yeah. that are like super mm -hmm. violent like yeah. rapists and stuff yeah. uh and he has to keep every time he's like i'm gonna fucking kill you all and stuff and he starts like talking like he like totally different than he does when he's in like cutscenes mm. and stuff and it's kind of like yeah, that part is where it's creating a bit of a disparity for me mm -hmm. uh but when it's when it's like really, resident evil 2 when I, when uh Claire you're talking about like, remake the resident evil 2 remake or yeah, yeah. yeah. Which part are you talking about? The like when you her, shoot a zombie. The, 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 the okay. comments she'll make. Ludo, when, Ludo narrative dis dissonance was the term I was. The, the comments about. she'll make when she's like fighting zombies seems a little out of character. Like, what yeah. the hell's wrong with you? As you shoot What the hell's wrong there? with you? Yeah. yeah it's like what? Uh, when when do you unlock your force powers? You oh ha, <laughs> you're funny. Uh, never. Um, what would make this game good? Yeah, it would. <laughs> Could you imagine just like force pushing a bunch of zombies? That would be fun. That right? would be that would be a lot. Tell of us fun. about Boozer. Boozer's no, I'm pretty just, good. I'm, just I'm, gonna, no, I'm gonna be. I'm, I, What's I'm Boozer? not gonna. Boozer's his friend, the guy oh, that okay. was up there. Uh, I will say this: I've, I've of all the supporting cast that I've met, I like them all. I think they're all really well acted. I think they're all pretty well written. I've heard there's some cringy moments later. I haven't really come across those yet, but. You know, I'm Some not cringy moments. Yeah, Everyone I, I knows what you're talking about. You're talking about the wedding thing. I don't. I think that's they're getting blown. married, I and, have and no she, idea and what you're they're like about. reading their wedding vows, and she's like, you, "Promise to ride me the, as me, much as you ride your bike. <laughs> promise yeah. to yeah. ride me as which, much as you ride which your bike." Which is kind of like, well, yeah, like when you ride on someone because they're not doing a good job. Yeah, 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 yeah you keep yeah, them up yeah, to yeah, stuff. You yeah, keep them. Yeah, you gotta sometimes you gotta ride them kind of hard to make sure that they stay in line. Got to purely innocent that line there. Exactly. Thank you. But people blew that, I think, way out of proportion. I mean, I haven't seen it. I don't know how the line is delivered, honestly. But, like, if the, if the, if 
if what the problem people are having with it is that it, the line exists. Yeah, I think from it's, what, from I, think what it's, I understand, the, the, it's the writing that's the problem. It's the delivery that's actually the pretty, delivery is great, and yeah. there are I'm sure going to be, and there are there have been moments where like maybe the writing isn't great, but there's also been lots of moments that I think are really well done, that are really touching, and like I've I so far I like I like the main character, like all the side characters I've met. I think they're great. I there's like every other camp in the world ha, ha, usually has like a leader that has like there, so I've met two main camps right now the, the, the leader of the first camp which is this one right here mm-hmm. he's like I was like oh I kind of like this guy he's he seems kind of down to earth and then you find out he has this like he's basically like a fucking alt-right like he has the radio station where he just preaches about you know the gut like the, this is great what happened because the the government's gone and you know they were mm-hmm. trying to take our guns and all this shit and I was like fuck that guy mm-hmm. and then you go to the other camp uh, and there's this woman who's like, like your grandma. She's like, she seems really nice and like she cares about you, but she's really taking people in and forcing them to work. Which at first I was kind of like, okay, it's a, it's a crazy world out there. She's making people work if they want to live in her camp, which is right. But she doesn't let them leave, so mm-hmm. it's kind of like, oh, so she's basically like turning so them slavery. Into, she's like turning them into a, you know slaves, but like you don't really get that for a while, and it starts to like, slit and you're like, oh, this bitch is crazy. Uh, so and it's all. Subtle stuff like that at first. I'm I'm interested to see where it all goes. Um, from my understanding, one of the main points of contention, from what I've been reading, is the bike itself, mm-hmm. because you have to do a lot of maintenance. You have to constantly refill it with gas. But the way they structure the map and how you navigate with the bike is that you know, when you're on a motorcycle, you see a ramp, you automatically want to go for the ramp because hey, that's a fun thing in a video game. Sure, but if it's a high ramp, you could damage your motorcycle and then you have to fucking repair it. And I hear that's a very well, common in well, this Well, not necessarily. I've uh, I've only damaged my bike to the point where I had to actually repair it to get it moving once. And the same thing, I, I ran out of gas for the first time yesterday, mm-hmm. and I was like coming up on a camp. You can actually once you run out of gas, you actually have to like push it to the camp to get, <laughs> or or you don't have to push it to the camp. You can go and find a barrel a or a thing and okay. bring it back if you want, whatever you want to do. Um, but like when you hit a ramp, you can actually like kind of control like the position. So the trick is to try and land in line with the ground so you don't want if you come at it at a weird angle that's what's going to damage your bike or if it's just too high i haven't really hit any ramps that have been too high yet but you know i could see how that might get annoying but it hasn't happened to me yet i'll okay. if it happens to me i'll i'll mention it next time but. And i guess another thing people are kind of complaining about is that sony wants this game to last a while so they're going to be doing like weekly challenges for playing this hmm. oh like well. I mean, I mean, that seems like I a pretty standard I mean, it's, it's fine, thing. but, like, up to a certain point, like, people aren't going to be playing this in October. Well, but, I, I mean, it'll like, still be offered. I hear it's, like, 60 hours long. It so. is It is pretty long. Uh, it seems like it's pretty long. I, I it seems like a game that maybe shouldn't be that long. Uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, the... Uh, how, how long is it? It's about 60 hours, I think. The thing is, like... Honestly, Brad, to me, an open-world game like this, 60 hours doesn't seem that crazy. Yeah, I mean... The thing is, like to me, the the novelty of, of the the novelty of the zon like the, the one thing other thing I like a lot about the zombies is like the freakers, or whatever, is like during they don't tend to come out very much during the day. So at night they actually they, they build like nests and you 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 can find nests around in the world and clear them out. And like nests are like really creepy. They're like these disgust. They look like these giant disgusting like bird nests that are like built into the sides Kinda of like houses and shit. Too. I'm not gonna, yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Nick. That, oh, that a lot of that does sound like state of decay. Yeah. Okay, well, th- well, that was in the first game too. There was like little like infested like things and stuff. But yeah, those two houses, did actually have the physical the, the nests dark heart. Gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah when people were hearts, yeah. when people mentioned state of decay, I was more thinking about like the taking care of your camp kind of. No, thing. like in, in state of decay, there were physical like okay. literally a giant red thing that you had to like shoot and throw fire at and stuff to destroy. Gotcha. So yeah. Yeah, in that sense, there's there's definitely uh, also, some similarities. Another open world zombie game that seems a more, I mean, a little more immediately compelling to me. But granted, I haven't finished it yet. Is Dying Light? Oh yeah, I mean, to be honest, like, don't get me wrong. Dying Light was my one of my favorite games of that year, and it's still absolutely my favorite. Uh, Dying, Dying Light. Light. What? Also, seventy four percent on Metacritic. So like, what? just to say that whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. sorry, Nolan's trying to make a joke. What's Dying Light? What? Anybody? What's dying light? You're wearing the shirt. No one's, yeah, no one's a wearing. Dying light shirt. I'm oh, wearing yes. a dying light shirt. Dude, don't get me wrong. <laughs> dying light is still kind of no, but like, so so you're saying like, oh, this thing's getting fucking blasted, but like, it's like right there between like dying light and Mad Max, which are 
generally considered to be like you know pretty good games, right? I, so I, I don't I, think this. What is... I'm more referring to is maybe the the specific discourse around it because a game can get. I, I, a, a game I, can I get think an... that Discord discourse exists just because it's a Sony first party exclusive, and and so people are immediately comparing it to stuff like Horizon sure, and God yes. of War and yes. whatever the fuck else they've been putting out lately, and or Last of Us. And everyone thinks they got to be like ninety percent plus games, and if it isn't that, it's a failure. But like. I mean, I mean, based on I'm, I'm just saying, based on like the specific discourse that was being like, you, you can have two games that get like a seventy or on a review, right? Mm-hmm. And like the discourse in one can be just like, oh, it's pretty good, but you know, it doesn't do anything great. And the other one could be like, this game is boring as fuck, and just like use totally different language. And you know, that depending on who wrote, you know wrote the review, and like that could be the describing the experience they had. I'm just saying the overwhelming. Uh, from the, based on the, the three or four reviews that I was reading on the day it came out, like it was, it seemed very, very negative to the point where I was even questioning, like, "Fuck, do I should I even buy this and play this?" And I'm sure a lot of people probably had the same knee jerk reaction, but I decided to, you know, suck it up and play it anyways and give it a try. And it turns out, like, I'm having a hell of a fun time with this game. And I don't, I don't. It's one of the instances where I don't feel like maybe like the overall review scores that I'm seeing are really kind of matching up with what I'm experiencing. Yeah. And again, I'm only 20 hours in. I still have another probably 40 to you know hours in this game, so I could maybe feel that that way towards the end. But like, it, it might also not help because another zombie game came out next week, World or last week, World War World Z. World War Z, yeah. And that's surprisingly not bad. Yeah, but it's also it's, a very different kind of. It's more like a it, Left 4 Dead. It's, it's more like yeah. Left 4 Dead, but it's also got that zombie crowd tech that was advertised in Days Gone. But that's always available. That's always happening. Yeah. Do we so. have any sense of like how this game's doing? Because I, I feel like it, the, yeah, the response that I'm noticing. It outsold Mortal Kombat. It, I feel like the response I'm noticing is that like the people who aren't playing it like just don't really care. Sure. About it, you know, like it seems like there's a lot of like disinterest. Like, huh. That's a thing. I wasn't really interested when it got announced. Now it came out, and I'm still not interested. It's right. not. It's not like hatred or anything. Well, you know? I mean, it's, I know. I, I'm it's more not, just like. Eh. To be honest, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's necessarily hatred or just. It's probably more of just disinterest on uh, on the general audience's part. I mean, there's a lot of great games out right now, and this has a lot of steep competition. Even if you like, if you're not caught up with some of the other games that came out this year, this probably wouldn't be very high on your priority list necessarily. But mm-hmm. it is also one of those things that, like, I, I'm just kind of like. The reason I've been talking about it so much on Twitter and like talking about it, trying to get talk about it with people in Discord about it is because like I do feel like it's one of those games that like deserves an, a solid attempt from people because you might end up finding something that you really fucking love even though maybe not, the majority of other people don't love it. I don't know, yeah. but uh, I don't know, man. The fuck, it, just there's a lot to there's a, I think there's a lot to like about this game. It's kind of it's kind of it, there's some bugs. There's some it's yeah. it's not as polished as something like Horizon or God of War, obviously, yeah. but like the world itself is beautiful. Like, um, I want to play it, but I want to wait until they have a couple balance patches. Yeah, and they promised the balance patches. But also, I was based on the reviews that I was reading. It, I was convinced that like without a patch, this was going to be practically unplayable. And I played the first, uh, the first day I was playing this, I didn't have a patch installed on it. Uh, aside the very first one, which was a pretty small patch, and they've done two since then. And I've actually experienced more bugs in the game since they patched it twice than that first couple days I was playing, which I think was kind of strange. Um, I don't know. I I. I think a lot of what I was reading with this game prior to release painted a very different picture than what I ended up experiencing because a lot of there's a lot, I think there's a lot to like here. If you, I feel like if the la, the last of us didn't exist, I feel like people would maybe be more interested in this game because it does feel tonally speaking a lot like the last of us. It's trying a lot of the same tricks. It's using a lot of the mechanically speaking. It's using a lot of the same things. It's just in a more open environment. But like but like execution, right? Is, I mean, execution. Sure. Stuff. I mean, it's, yeah. they're, they're not Naughty Dog. Obviously, they're not Naughty Dog, but they're going for the same type of feel. They're going for the same type of story. Like they're hitting a lot of emotional beats. There's even the opening of this game is is even reminiscent of the opening of the last of us although far less effective but like you can tell they care about trying to tell a, a good story and sure but an like but like what i'm getting is like as an outsider it's like i would never really even play this for the story the, the, the this might seem more exciting to me if like state of decay or dying light didn't exist sure maybe because the, the idea of an open world zombie game might seem more exciting but you're right, but I mean, and I think it is going for something very different than both of those games too. Like I, you know, Dying Light is a very vertical, like urban, 
uh, world, and it's a, a lot of emphasis on melee combat. Uh, yeah. You know, State of Decay is more based on survival. And honestly, if I had to like levy like a real complaint against this game, it might be that I wish they would have leaned farther into the survival yeah, me mechanics. Too, me because, too, for sure. Like the fact that I'm having to craft things and constantly look for for uh, resources in the in the world is the, one of the my favorite parts about this game. But they don't go far enough with it. Well, they, didn't they say they're coming out with like a survival mode? Uh, I don't know actually. I, I think so. But like by the time they do that, I'm gonna be done with it. I'm not gonna go back to it. It's it's like one of those things. But like, you are gonna finish it. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely gonna finish it. Like I like. So the, so you're saying you like this more than Persona Five? Damn. I mean maybe. I mean well, no, that's fine. I mean you curious. do. You, I mean the thing is like this type of game, admittedly, is like one of my favorite. Sure, sure, kinds sure. of games. Understand. I love I love open world action games. I just yeah. I love them, even though they can get monot- a little monotonous at times. Like exploring open worlds is like one of my favorite fucking things to do in video games, I just, and I think this game does a pretty good job of it. I kind of I'm kind of fatigued about these things, and I think a lot, a of, lot people, of people. I think are, a lot yeah. of people are, and I think that's totally fair. But I think a lot of people are like taking that out on it like saying like the game has no value because they are tired of that type well, that, of game. That's too harsh, I, dude. I'm just saying, way like a lot of the harsh. a lot of the the rhetoric I was reading about this game prior to release to me felt way too harsh, especially in hindsight having played it now. So, yes, I've been trying to champion this game a little bit. I, I've I've actually there's quite a few people that have been talking about it with me in Discord who picked it up and played it and seemed to be enjoying it. I know Skyliner, Mr. Green Toast are playing it now. Well, like at the yeah, very least, I'm great. glad you're keeping Days Gone conversation out of the general gaming chat. <laughs> You're welcome. At least you're, you're very, not putting in the division chat. I, I mean, appreciate th- that. The funny thing is I opened up the... That's, I, I will say, I'd play this game like five times before I played the fucking division. I'm so actually... Fuck I'm, you. But the division, <laughs> I'm actually true, looking though. forward to playing like, it. Like, the division seems so boring to me. At least this has zombies in it? Yes, it does have lots of zombies in it. Dude, and you know what? I'm so fucking excited to get to how my first, st- like, actual horde. How hear that? What? These days. People being so happy that there's fucking zombies in a video game. I don't think. I mean, that's just. I, I think you misread what I said. I think but. that's just more of a comment on how he feels about the division. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I got it. But I, I am Breakers. super. Okay, so I will so, just close this up by saying I am super excited to get to my first like actual horde, like the, like the crazy shit listen. where you're being chased by like hundreds of zombies on screen because that shit. Nick, I get. Okay, you gotta fucking stop. What? I I I what? I don't want to hear you utter another fucking word about Days Gone on this podcast at this end of the year bullshit. Any of your fucking videos, if you don't stop calling them zombies, they're freakers, and you need to call them freakers, Nick. I was really wondering where you were going. It, at. It's it's insulting to to the people who created the lore of this deep zombie world they're freakers nick and what are you embarrassed to call them what they are no okay then they're freakers you know what as far as like as far as like zombie names go like like non zombie like i feel like freakers is a pretty good one like, what's what's the zombie the variety good? in this game? I mean, we know there's a You mean the bear. freakers for variety. There's Chris a freaker Davis. bear. We know there's a freaker bear. Is there, there a freaker bear? There, well, there's wildlife and there's also zomb- freakers. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> they, call it, they call it a rager bear, I guess. I don't know. I've a only rager been, bear? I've okay. only been attacked by an actual bear, not a zombie bear. A so what? A freaker bear. A freaker. God, that's fucking. I'm getting confused. What do you want me to call it? A freaker or a zombie? A freaker. freaker. There's no zombies in this game. Yes. Get your terminology All right, fine. right. Fuck. There is a freaker. There are freaker bears. I have not been attacked by a freaker bear. Just a regular bear. Okay. And you know what? That shit was pretty intense. To answer your question about variety. <laughs> that, that's got to suck, right? What? You're like surviving a zombie apocalypse, but you also just have to deal with a bear. <laughs> Which doesn't need to be zombified, yeah, right? Just in it's general, a fucking huh? bear, and it's like you, you're already dealing with a lot, man. Oh, also, real quick, I want to say you can craft like uh, suppressors and shit and to attach them onto your guns. Uh, and like, I, this is one complaint. Another complaint I have is uh, sometimes aiming it seems kind of off. Like when you're trying to get like sometimes I'm like I swear to God I got a headshot there, but it just totally it, it does goes, seem to, it does seem to be very like the hitbox is very dead on and like your yeah. bullets pretty small yeah like, it that's seems one like, thing but, I noticed since they first showed this game but really. when you do land a headshot ooh it feels really good like like the way the, the freaker goes flying the freaker goes down like super fast when you had just like one clean like like shot like super super satisfying um freakers freakers yeah freakers dude I don't know I'm really I'm really digging this game. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to my first horde, mm-hmm. horde uh, of freakers. Horde of freakers. Uh, also, driving through tunnels, like when you like go, go into a tunnel on your motorcycle, 
is terrifying because mm. you know sometimes there's nothing in there but sometimes yeah, there's sometimes like there's, there's dudes hanging out in there and you have to you're like weaving in be- between like crash cars and shit and like whew, that shit's intense i don't know anyways i'll i'll give you all an update later when i'm closer to the fin- end of the game but thank you for letting me get all this off my chest because i'm really enjoying this game cool i hope some other people are as well it's also it's beautiful it's a fucking beautiful game yeah Maybe not. I'd Horizon rather play levels of beautiful GTA or God of War. Lost in the Damned and Red Dead uh, Zombies. Red, Red Dead, Dead uh, uh, Undead, Undead Nightmare. Nightmare. Undead Nightmare. You know what? That was one of the reasons why I was interested in this game because I was like, I haven't felt this way about a zombie game since maybe Undead Nightmare because it is like that where you're exploring this like big open world, but like sometimes, sometimes you just there's no zombies anywhere. Like you'll yeah, okay. be walking through the woods. You may call it a zombie game. Sorry. sorry. Yes. But they're freakers. But if you're referring to what they are in the game, it's they're freakers. fucking freakers. All I'm saying is like, remember? Do you remember in Undead Nightmare? You're wandering out through yeah, the, the plains, yeah. whatever. And every once in a while, I just see like a fucking zombie like out wandering yeah. by itself, and there's no one else around. And other times, there's like fucking fifty of them coming at you. It's like that, and I love it. Also, it's scratching the itch that I think maybe I, like, I was really down on Far Cry Five, but mm-hmm. I, like, I love the world. Mm-hmm. I didn't so much. The world love the feels game. similar. The world feels similar, but I also like the mechanics and stuff here more than i liked far cry 5 cool or okay. the story at least anyways that's all i'll say about that i'm sorry thank you i've gotten it off my chest days gone brad mm-hmm. tell us about steam world quest i've been playing some steam world quest a little bit of steam world quest this is the new game from image inform the mm-hmm. people what made uh, Steam, Steam World, World Dig yeah. and Steam World Heist. By the way, Steam World Heist. Oh, that game was Steam fucking World good. They have a too. bit of a Steam World Dig Two. Okay, that's the one I played recently. Steam mm-hmm. World Dig Two, which was great. That's my only Steam World game I've played. You didn't yeah. play Steam World Heist? No. Nope. Steam World Heist is good. I remember y'all talking about. It. I remember seeing the footage. It's like of it, but... XCOM meets Peggle. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's fucking good. Um, so this is Steam World Quest. This is a RPG. Uh, with card-based combat. Did you say cards? Cards. I hear you're into card games recently, Brad. Well, I'm into Slay the Spire. <laughs> Tell you what I'm not that into. Oh, no. Really? Steam World Quest. Oh, Ooh, that's no. not good. It's okay. It's okay. It's, uh, I'm, I've only played like a couple of hours. But in that couple of hours... Are you playing this on your Switch or are you playing this? On my Switch, yeah, yeah. It seems like a good... Yeah, I guess if you're gonna play, it might as well be on your Switch, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, so it looks pretty. Outside of combat, which you're looking at combat right now, you're just kind of running around these paths. It's very fairly linear. You might see like a branching path with like a chest or something. Um, but you're kind of following uh, a, a, a somewhat linear progression. There's story. You know, you have conversations. You know, I have three characters in my party now. Um, Does it have that? I mean, it looks like it has that Steam World like charm, right? Yeah, I mean, the, charm, yeah, there's definitely. the there's the aesthetic. The music is great. Um, it it exudes, you know, that Steam Worldness, sure. Um, but I, it, it, well, I guess I'll explain what it is. So when, once you get into combat, uh, it's a it's a card based system, but. I guess the cool thing is, is each of your different characters has different decks, mm-hmm. um, which the deck can each deck can have up to eight cards in it. And now those are like you know regular like physical attacks, and there's like spells. There's attacks that are more powerful that do various effects. And uh, once you get into battle and you take your turn, you're pulling from all three characters' decks at once. Okay. Right. So so like you do you do a draw of like six cards right or uh uh, yeah like six cards and it could be like two cards from one character three cards from another and like one card from your last character right yeah and and that's sort of your hand that you have to play you can only play three cards a turn um so could one person go three times one person can go three times in fact you're incentivized to to pick three cards from one character because then they get a combo bonus where they do like a fourth ability as like a follow-up and you have the option of of redrawing like two of the cards you drew that turn to try to uh to kind of get the cards you need for that combo because you have cards that you could just play as many times as you want right but then you have cards that have like like a like a mana requirement if you will that you you like uh that you charge up by doing like a regular attack right Mm -hmm. so when, when when you go into battle you see a meter fill up on the top with little cogs right so you might draw a card 
that ha that requires you to to have uh, three cogs built up um, to, to play that card, right? And, and each time you do like a regular default attack that doesn't require a cog, it creates a cog, right? So yeah. you, you, you might go into a turn and do a regular play uh, a card for a regular attack another regular attack and now you have two card two cogs to play that more powerful attack at the end and if they're all from the same character you get that combo bonus and you do another effect mm -hmm. and, and each of the and, and i'm getting more cards for each character kind of as i explore as i find chests uh, as i you can craft some cards in shops and and there's been there seems to be quite a you know, I, I guess a fair variety of, of, of abilities and stuff for each character. And they, they are sort of falling into, you know, various class archetypes. Like I have a, a, a knight who's mostly, I guess, just physical damage. And then I have a magey type uh, robot character. And then this big green dude, he's kind the of, robot Hulk. he's kind of a brawler, but he's also like a healer too. Hmm. He's like a defensive so, guy too. So I have, I have a question, Brad. Yeah. So, you know, depending on the look of the draw and how much mana you have and whatever, that, that kind of determines what you can do with that, that turn, that attack yeah. phase. Uh, do enemies fall like victim to that as well? Could there be a time where only like one or two enemies go? because, Or is it they always no, attack? No, they all always attack. They play their card, but they're flipped over so you don't know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And that that's pretty much it. Now, like like these, these like bomb dudes here... They're, they kind of are taking their time and they eventually explode, which, you know, I kind of assumed they would, right? Because mm -hmm. they're bombs. bombs. <laughs> they look like bombs, right? Yeah. Bomb. They're fused, it's a yeah. common be lit, so, yes. enemy type in RPGs. But, they're so lit. But I guess, ultimately, it's just kind of, like, simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. I'm playing on the hardest difficulty that was, you know, I think it was, like, easy, medium, hard. I'm playing on hard because, you know, I've been playing a lot of Slay the Spire. I've been getting my ass kicked, so I'm like, well... Let's just keep that train going, right? But but even then, it's harder, I guess. But it's not like I have so many options because all I have is what's in my hand. And it's from a pool of cards that, you know, like I said, each deck can only be up to eight cards anyways. Mm -hmm. And you need a certain amount of cards that generate cogs and a certain uh, amount of cards that to, like, basically play those cogs. So each deck is, so, is sort of balanced in, like, what it can do as well. So... Any given turn, really, I could do only so many things, and it just seems like Sam. Is this? It, it seems too simple. Is mm. this baby's first card-based RPG? No, I, I mean, first of all, there's not a lot of like card-based RPGs. What is there's like Bot and Kaitos or whatever? Because outside of what about, combat, what about The Witcher, Thronebreaker? Um. Yeah, kind of I, mean, I mean, sure, but I mean, thing, right? see, The Witcher Thronebreaker is like far more complex than anything here. Yeah. Uh, th that, this is this is this is a card-based combat game that is just a card game like there's yeah not so much combat yeah in that. yeah exactly th th this is um i mean slay the spire is card-based combat but it's like yeah. infinitely more complex and there's like so well, you, many more in, cards in slay the spire, you're, you're doing combinations and it's all about yeah. managing your, your defense and your health and yeah. your current stat boosts yeah. and how cards affect uh, you know each other. other cards and you have all these relics and stuff yeah. like here Maybe it's only because I'm a couple hours in, but it seems like really straightforward. And <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't know. It's fine. It's just not. It's really not hooking me. Ma mainly because I guess outside of battle, there's not much going on. Like it's yeah. pretty straightforward, and the exploration is either non-existent or kind of dull. And and you're, I'm getting these new cards, and they seem like compelling, but I can only put like so many of them into a deck, and. I don't feel like I have too much control over what's happening in any given turn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm pretty much always going for that combo, right? So I, I get I get a handful of cards. I'm redrawing ones to try to get at least three cards from the same character because that bonus is, seems to be worth it almost every turn if you can do it. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I'm not I'm not using my brain much. Gotcha. So even though I'm playing on hard. So you're you're mainly focused on. A single character combos, but are there like cards that combine with other cards? There that are allow there, character co there, co op attacks and things like that. There is, there is actually. Okay. Um, but uh, I haven't been again, I'm not super far. Advanced. I got like one card, I think, so far that does that, okay. but it requires you to like not do a combo because it requires that I think that other one of the other players to play a card that turn as well, so you're not going to get your fourth card bonus. But, I mean, I haven't really tried those cards. I, I just didn't see much value in that. Um, um, but I'm sure it gets a little trickier later. Um, mm -hmm. Also, 
uh, you know, the presentation of this game is like is like really nice, so like visually, music wise, yeah, and it stuff. Looks fantastic. And like the the I, there's something about the writing where they're like telling jokes, and it's it's you know quote unquote funny, but like the presentation of the dialogue and the conversation seems so like boring it takes the oomph mm. out of the joke it, it takes the oomph out of it like, like there's a lot you can do to make dialogue more fun to read outside of the writing like the presentation of it like it's just really tiny font at the bottom of the screen that's like very static and, and you know it's, it's all you know the same for all the characters you know there there's ways to do like text bubbles and like animation of like certain words like like shouts are like you know bigger words mm-hmm. you know or or they'll like move or something but here the delivery the effect like that jiggle uh, effect i yeah. mean there's a lot you can do to liven up a game that isn't voice acted mm-hmm. um that you're just reading yeah, you know, yeah. and here the presentation of, of of the of the spoken word is so boring that I, I I'm fighting the urge to just skip through the dialogue, even though it's it's very light and humorous, because it's can, like can I ask what yeah. the I saw you outside of combat switching your characters. Yeah. Kind of it. What was the what's the point of switching nothing, nothing? Nothing. They they all they all can do like a single attack out of battle, which is just basically to break trigger open combat. crates or like mm. to trigger combat with a slight hit point advantage. Mm-hmm. So there's no like open world advantage like this character will open that door or this character will jump not, up here. Not from what I see. Like I'm telling you, like outside of battle seems like super straightforward. Now there does seem to be like secret paths and stuff here and there, some that I have not found. Um, so, you know, that, hey, that's on me, but, like, like, Critical Path seems, like, super straightforward, kind of mm. simple. I mean, I gotta be honest with you guys, like, I thought this was gonna be my jam for sure. I like the Steam World games, you know I oh, like yeah. card-based shit, I've been playing Poop Socking, Slay the Spire non-stop, you know, I expected this to, you know, be right on my fucking alley, and it do- it definitely doesn't seem bad, and, uh, and maybe, maybe you- I'm just not, like... I'm, and I'm, I'm finding myself a little bored playing I mean, this game. I, the battles are really long. I'm wondering how much of that is because you are playing it side by side with Slay the Spire, well, which is I clearly mean, something that is really your jam. Like, I mean, I'm wondering if your reception would be It doesn't work like that. Right? I have Dark Souls, but I can play you know Neo and still like be like, oh, I fucking love this fucking but game. But it right? just seems like maybe this would have been like you know a great game to like scratch that itch a few months after you had finished Slay the Spire. So you're like, well. You know, I want to. I want something like that, but you know, maybe without the commitment level, kind of thing. How, how much time have you put into the game? I don't know. Couple it's just a couple of hours. Yeah. Okay. But like I'm saying, I'm, I don't feel like this desire to keep going. Or I mean, like this urge pulling me to like turn on my switch and, and keep playing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's a little slow in well, combat. It, and it's do, a little boring out, out of combat. Do you know how how this is doing critically? Or I, I haven't seen. Oh uh, well, I think yeah. I mean well, I mean I, mean, I guess most Steamroll games review pretty well. Yeah, but I mean, I mean the the last the last ones have these gameplay hooks that are so yeah. I, I would say, I, I would say that the like in SteamWorld Dig, you have this this vicious cycle of I want to dig a little farther so I can get more stuff, so I can upgrade my stuff, so I can dig farther, so I can get the better stuff. In SteamWorld Heist, you have these really complex, like I was saying, kind of XCOM meets Peggle combat yeah. scenarios where you're trying to position yourself in a good area so you can, you know, do a combo. And it felt or, so fresh. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, so far everything I've seen of this doesn't seem like it has that kind of that that catch, that hook, that thing that makes it different from other games that it's drives just, you to it's like it's, it's more of like a cool thing. It's like It's like someone saying to you, like, Oh, this this developer that does SteamWorld games are, is really cool. Like, imagine if they did an RPG. It's a sick it's, idea. It's like, that's why like, I'm oh. surprised that and, I'm not and, and falling out over hills. Well, SteamWorld Dig and SteamWorld Heist had some pretty decent stories going on in them yeah. too. Yeah. And hearing that this is kind of I, like, mean, I mean, I gotta be honest with you. Like, like I think the SteamWorld games have a similar presentation issues with the way they present dialogue. Yeah. Uh, um, um, you know, you might actually really like the story. It's just. You know, I'm fighting the urge to kind of skip through it, but like, I did when I, I was playing. I guess the most recent one was Steam World Dig Two. Mm-hmm. Same kind of thing. I feel like compelled to kind of skip through dialogue yeah, in that true. game as well. So I mean, that that, that, that one could just be on me. And that was also I mean, it a seems... different genre though, too. Like, like it, this, yeah. it feels like you know those had like good stories, but they were also very simple. Yeah, this and is an like, RPG. This is more like an RPG. The characters is... seem cool. It's just there's so much more you could do to yeah. like liven it up. Yeah. 
I do love the way it looks though, and I, I'd interested to hear that because I love the music and SteamWorld Dig. And too, the music so. has has been really good. Like, there's yeah. a boss battle theme that like kicks ass. It's awesome. Nice. I, I um, would honestly believe that. I mean, you say you're only a couple hours in. The game probably expands significantly. It just it you to, gotta though. get to that. How long? Point. How long is this? Is an? I mean, you gotta. I heard this. this is I like, heard this game's like 15 hours. Uh, that seems pretty. Hmm. I mean, it's funny because like, isn't that's kind of maybe that's. Maybe it's like that's not super long. long. I mean, not for but, an like RPG, for a SteamWorld you know? game. Like most SteamWorld games are like what ten hours, it's like eight to ten hours or something. I don't know. I'm guessing. Yeah, I'd say fifteen. Sure, you would 20. think that switching to a genre like an RPG would maybe like. I mean, listen. Bit, it, it, I don't know. Like, listen. I know. The last Slay RPG the Spire I played that was fifteen had, hours was like Fable. I know Slay the Spire has like cards in it, but like, listen. It's such a. I mean, it's such a different type of game. Like, it, it's not like. <sighs> I really don't think that that's what's causing me to be a little bored here. No, sure. You know, I, I mean, it's not. Now, when I play like Bloodstain in a post Hollow Knight world, maybe that oh my is. God. May, may, I, may, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe, maybe that is kind of. Maybe Bloodstain has raised my expectations, but I don't even consider Slay the Spire in this game to be even in the same genre. It's just so. Yeah. It's so different. I mean, Slay the Spire is more like FTL than this shit. This is just like kind of a a basic jrpg with a combat system that's a little too simple for my tastes yeah you know give me grandia <laughs> dude i fucking looked at my kickstarter pledge today because i couldn't remember what i backed uh-huh bloodstained at fuck it's 60 bucks man yep. and you just said it it's a post hollow knight world mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is i don't know if i've made the right decision <laughs> uh Anyways, I mean, not, was, it's, it's a post Hollow Knight world, but you also have games like Indivisible coming out too. That's true. Yeah, Which but I didn't pay sixty bucks for Indivisible. Mm. Paid sixty bucks for Bloodstained. Well, no. Who well, cares I know about I, the money you spent. On I know. I mean, that was you, you helped to get made. Not, yeah, not to mention that's long in the past. I've, not, yeah. I've paid the money; it's done. So that was a nice trailer. Holy shit, Pokop! We will talk we'll get to that. Oh my god! <laughs> Dang, Pokop! Uh, Pokop says I backed at one hundred and seventy-five dollars. I need oh. Bloodstained to be good. <laughs> All right, we will uh, we'll talk about Bloodstain in the second segment. Actually, is there anything else you want to say about Steam World Quest? No, or? no, I mean, I'll, I'll keep going. I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to bum anybody out, but hmm? I expected to like it more. People come here for our hot takes, okay? Or not so hot takes. I don't know. Anyways, we're gonna take a break. Uh, when we come back, we will do any last quick mentions game wise, and then we'll jump into news, which of which there is a lot. Not anything I think is gonna take a hell of a long time to discuss, but there's a lot of little things worth talking about. Um. Oh my God. Where Zlade. did I... Zlade? How much money did you spend on Bloodstained? Zlade just said Sh I backed Bloodstained. Share with the room if you feel comfortable. <laughs> Zlade says I backed Bloodstained Share for with the room far more if than you're not Pokemon. comfortable. Do it anyway. Oh my God. We'll we'll is oh is it God. three or four digits? No. Oh. Hey, hey, listen. Can you really back that at more nah. than? Nah. There. Right. I had dinner with Igarashi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he you, made did, me pay. Did y'all see the April Fool's thing from them? No. It got me for like half a second. No. What? It was like if you pay like I can't remember what it was. It was like six hundred dollars oh, or the something. Blood packet? They would send you a, a pack of Iga's blood. Like yeah. a, like a, like they would take blood from Iga. And for like half a second, I was like, what the fuck? But then I was like, oh, it's April Fool's. Like. Yeah, that, I saw that too, and I was like, no way. Oh, right, right, right. Anyways, uh, we'll come back. We'll do uh, news and Patreon questions, of course. So if you're watching us live, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Four Player Podcast. We have a lot of news to go over tonight. What do you say we just jump right into it? Okay. We're just going to let Chris Davis hit us with a random news Let's topic. Let's go alphabetical. Alphabetical. All Starting right. with B. Blood. Okay, here we go. This is this builds beautifully off of what we talked about at the end of the last, of the mm. first segment. Bloodstained gets a we've got a. a we had an interesting update. The makeover Kickstarter update. Okay. You get Wait, to make over. I haven't heard about this. Bloodstain has got a visual upgrade, like a makeover. They redid a lot of the assets have, in the game. Should I have read that last so, so they put out email a, I got? They put out a release trailer today, giving you the release date. Which is June eighteenth for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and then, and then June a week 20, later for June twenty fifth for Switch. But the bigger the bigger part of this news topic it's is that not, they we're getting there. Let me get the, let me get the thing out say there. It, say it. The game is getting a visual overhaul. 
I think this is probably what they brought in uh, way forward to do, right? Uh, well, I presume. They what they showed is a lot of the old art and some of the new art, but it's not like this new art is any sort of like news or reveal. They've been showing art revisions for months and months and months yeah. now. Like, and like, 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 about it for months like, and months and months. The, like, they did like an old version and a new version of that like uh, boss you fight on the boat with like the huge titties. Like that new version is like from last year, maybe even longer. The ago. thing is, you know what I mean? Like, the, it's the strange thing about this trailer is that it served two purposes: one, to announce the release date; two, like it spends the first part of the trailer just like sh- showing like. Comments YouTube comments people. about yeah. people shitting on its visual style, oh, yeah. and then it has Koji Igarashi sitting there, and it talks, and he says, "What, what did he say? I'll prove them wrong. I'll prove them wrong." And then it has, and then it, for at some point, it flashes the word "poop" on screen, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it, basically implying their old style looked like poop. Can, and so, here, can someone like tweet or Discord me this video? I I'm sure. This. I'm sure someone can do that. It still yeah. kind of looks infamous like poop. Nolan. It still looks kind of like poop if you're not a big fan of the... They didn't, like, change the art style. No, they, they didn't just, change the art style, but it's it's a lot more detailed now. Yes, it's a lot more detailed, which I don't know if that's what people necessarily wanted. Yeah, it, this isn't the approach. Say, like, you say, well, maybe you don't like the way it looks, but it's going to play great. You know, like, mm-hmm. not... It looks at least a little better, you know? It, it, was, it was kind of a weird trailer. Yeah. But you know what? I'm glad that it's almost out because I'm ready for this saga to be kind of over. I'm ready to like play it and find out whether we like it or not. That's kind of what I'm. That's kind of where I'm at on Bloodstained mm-hmm. because I've played this. Uh, I played it at E3 and I think I played it at a PAX once, mm-hmm. and both times I think I walked away being kind of underwhelmed by just the way the character feels. Yeah, and maybe that's more of. I'm I'm not super familiar with like older Castlevania, so maybe that's just. To me, it felt kind of slow and sluggish. I think and maybe that's spoiled just... by more recent uh, Metroidvania. Yeah, there. it's well, people not... said that about Chasm. And... It's not Hollow Knight. Yeah, you're right. Chasm was you're very right. yeah. Igarashi. I I haven't played it since I played Chasm, and Chasm I had the same kind of reaction when I first started playing it. But by the end of finishing Chasm, I really enjoyed my time with that game. So I'm hoping that I feel better about the way this game plays and feels once I've spent more time with it. It didn't demo well though, hmm. in my opinion. Um, but. It's coming soon. I mean, I've been unimpressed by everything I've played, and I've played the demos extensively. But so. you are going to play it, I presume. Of course. I mean, of course. Like, I want this to be great, and I want it to review well, and I want there to be more. It's is there just, a chance, Brad? I, I think that this it's is secretly amazing. I think this is more likely to be like Mighty Number no. Nine. Ooh, uh, that that lo- seems a little hard. I wish you could see our faces. Then it is to be like you know, don't you put Order of Ecclesia, me, you know. Or could it just be more like Chasm? I think if this game is successful, it will be its strengths will be similar to those of Chasm. Um, but I mean, it's gonna look. I mean, I don't. Know. We'll see. Cool. We'll see. We'll f- we'll find out at the end of June, won't we? I think yep. it looks bad and it seems kind of boring. What's next in the news? Hit us with another news We're topic. E now. Uh. Okay, I didn't even know about this until I saw it in the doc. There's a new Earthworm Jim game that was announced, <laughs> and it's exclusive. By Tommy Tallarico. Really? Oh my yeah. god, really? Yeah, he, he's, he's, he worked on the original. What has he been doing? He, you know, he's been doing his video games live thing. His concert series. Yep. Yeah. He did a bumper for us once. But, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Tommy Tallarico and the whole original Earthworm Jim team. The whole original team? Well, I guess that probably, it wasn't, probably wasn't that many yeah, people. Yeah, it was like three, four people. Uh, okay, so I don't know what the, the na- name of this new television system is, but they announced a new Earthworm Jim game, and it's coming exclusive, exclusively to the new Intellivision, co- uh, the, the new Intellivision console. Which... Where five copies will get sold, and then a year later they'll port it no, to everything is, else. Guys, is the new Earthworm Jim a system seller? Apparently, no. So this this system, this new in, the Amic, in television Amic, Amico. What in television? Yeah, there's a new in, in television coming out. In television Amico. Amico. This isn't Amico. an amicable console. Maybe Amico. Amico. Apparently, like all the games coming to this thing are exclusive, including this new Earthworm Jim. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't think this is going to be like some powerhouse that can play. 
fucking like games that you would see coming out on no games. You know what I mean? no one this is like a pyramid scheme right Nobody like asked for this. this is th- no one this isn't real the, you're this, making these shit are up. just some this is know, the t- in television ouya it would, yeah this is this is an ouya but they got the license to the Intellivision name which is one that has not been relevant in Ever. you know 30 Many plus years. 30 plus years it, it's very this is very strange um but Earthworm Jim, does anybody have any fond memories of? I mean, are they just hopping on this whole like, mu- like you know, PlayStation One like classic and like? No, no, this is like a new console with new games. This is define not... new console, Brad. But I feel like it's I a mean, device that plays games, right? It's, it's a device that's being built from the ground up. It's not being. It's not. Just... Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like what? Like. How powerful is this? You know what I'm saying? Is it going to be... It can run just, Earthworm Jim. Well, define Earthworm Jim. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing it probably... Earthworm Jim were actually kind of crappy platformers that yeah. uh, that were successful because they looked really nice. Do you know they why? Had a, they had a good art style. And Earthworm doesn't have legs. How the fuck does a platform... It has got his super suit. Earthworm, yeah, his Earthworm suit. Jim is in a suit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, that's oh, a joke. I'm again. making a joke. Okay. Once again, my sarcasm flat. just goes under the... <laughs> the radar. Oh. Okay. Oh uh, man, we spent too much time on forty this topic. plus years. Okay. All right. Next news topic. Going to. We'll F. talk about that if that ever becomes relevant again. Uh. By the way, the Intellivision home video game console launched in nineteen seventy nine. Holy fuck! All right. Uh, we got apparently got our first look. Or? We apparently got our first look at some new concept art from from software which offers maybe some insight into what the next game from them might be. I can't even believe we're already talking about this, considering Sekiro is barely two months old. Well, I mean, they got to work on their next one. You're right. They're not just going to take a nap. Um, So I actually didn't put the details up here, but there was essentially a, uh, there's, there's two pieces of art that showed up in a, like a sizzle reel, I guess, that was not for things that were not used. I'm not sure what, why people assume this is for a new game and not just something that wasn't used on an old game. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a, there was like a wyvern, like a fucking dragon, which I don't know why that might not a dragon. I feel in a from like, yeah, game? I feel like that could just be an like an old Dark Souls thing that never got used. The other one was mm-hmm. like a wait. Who first of all who put this in the dock? Not me, not I. Oh, wait. I did. I did. Okay, so what are the well then? Pay okay. attention, Brad. You should be leading. This okay, thing. so 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 this concept art. Uh, well, so what's your question? <laughs> Jesus Christ! We should probably what show is this. The concept art. I mean, what I what I've already said is that my my question is first of all, why do people think this concept art is not is is something new rather than maybe something that just wasn't used on an old game, on an existing game? Like, why is this not rejected Dark Souls designs instead of? Mm, I know you, you're that 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 it's a good question. I don't necessarily have the answer, but people seem to be really excited about this because. So it is a it, it was a dark it is a from software concept artist who like they didn't really mean to this was like concept art that was like in the background like, like it do, it doesn't seem like old stuff it seems like stuff for a project in development okay and it also it didn't seem like concept art when I looked at it it looked more like three D models Maybe okay I'm wrong. sure sure sure. Um, but, but I mean, but one was for a dragon, right? One was for like a very elaborate looking dragon and one was for like a mermaid of sorts. And the mermaid seems to be tricky. So, so both of those suggest that, Hey, this is probably not like Bloodborne 2. Mm-hmm. This is, that's very not Bloodborne. But we are still adamant that Bloodborne 2 Why is not? happening. You can oh, have yeah. mermaids I mean, there's, and Bloodborne. There's, there's I mean, they sold Bloodborne so much for Sony. Yeah. But how many games can they possibly make that when their next game I mean, is not Bloodborne 2? They're just taking their you know fucking I mean? time, man. They want to knock it out of the park, man. Maybe, maybe I could, I could see Sony going, hey, let's make this a launch game, launch window game for the PlayStation 5. True. And it needs, y'all need to knock it out of the park. I mean, you know, money, dude. Big fat checks, like those giant novelty checks. They go to From Software and they say, make it happen. Uh, so people are saying, well, at the very least, this would be very Dark Soulsy because mm-hmm. this seems very dark fantasy yeah. and not like what Bloodborne or Sekiro, obviously. And some people are even going, well, there's a mermaid. This could be like some sort of like Pirate Souls mm. game, you know? Now, because they, sounds... they are technically done with Dark Souls, right? Pirate yeah. Souls sounds. One, awesome, right. dumb name. Two, 
awesome. Would love that. But man, that is a that is a well, big leap to take. Why not? From- they could call it Booty Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like it. Wait, why would you're they? You're done. And you're going for booty. That's the name in the bag. Booty Patrol. And the thing is, I can God picture that it. being the name. And like, I picture like the, the font they use for every fucking Souls game. Like just matching up to that. Just yeah. Booty Patrol written in the Dark Souls just, font? Yeah, it just, just, it makes sense in my oh, head. Oh, God. Thank you, Nolan. Yeah. I hope they use that. I hope they Me too. They realize that what Hit gold that up, is and they run software. with it. All I'm saying is, seeing a picture of a mermaid is... I feel like not a lot for such a large leap to, oh, they're making a pirate game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay. I, you could have put a pirate in a Dark Souls game. I mean, it probably wouldn't have fit very I mean, well, but you, you could have done a, it. a hat on them and you just give them a sword and a gun. There you go, man. That's all of a sudden you're a pirate. There were a lot of, there's a lot of weird shit in Dark you Souls. You open a lot of chests. There's, we're already getting piratey. There's a lot of weird shit in Dark Souls games, and I never ask questions. I just see it and I run. Okay. And I mean, if, it's, if, if, they, are going, if they were going in a pirate direction... The, the, the pacing of how Souls games build on one another and the content that they release for each game. Like, you know, Bloodborne introduced the more action-focused combat with less focus on defense and, you know, things like that. And that became much more prevalent in Sekiro. And Sekiro, this time around, you now have underwater swimming and exploration with even stronger Maybe action combat. Making a fucking- I just really hope that... In, they're making an open world game. They're making maybe. a Black Flag. That, yeah, like Dark I just, Souls. I just you know hope what? that it's that it's. I just. I, I I just really hope that it's a pirate game, but the reverse mermaid. So it's like the fish top, but the person bottom. <laughs> so like I just imagine like a goldfish on top, and then human legs with like still I guess like a penis dangling around, and okay. you have to fight them in combat, and they're slapping you with fins. I would okay, and this. now I'm hearing like the Souls music as yes. that fight happens. Uh, I I do want to be clear. This isn't a leak. This is. This is the concept. I would hope the the boat didn't have a. Leak this was in it, like right? concept art that bad. was officially shown off by Ryo Fujimaki, who's you know an artist at From Software, uh, for on a From Software panel at ZBrush Merge 2019, whatever that is. ZBrush is a uh, sculpting 3D sculpting yeah tool, and yeah. Th- these are like gifts. These these are 3D models. So so this is like you know official concept art. Uh, I don't know. You know, who's to say that it's for any like official game, but it could definitely, you know, a concept artist is. I could see this being a Dark Souls. Oh, no, what is that? I don't even, I can't even <laughs> put that away. No one. Usually <laughs> oh, you have like the producer. Oh, the dangling this the worst. You have like the producers of the game go to the concept artist and say, hey, make us a mermaid. Yeah. Or make us some sea creatures or something, you know. So you know what? I hope there's something to this. I really do. I hope there's swimming in the next Dark Souls game. Oh, or, that would be amazing. I mean, Sekiro has it. So what's to say that the next? But underwater games swimming. Yeah. All right. Um. It, it there is underwater swimming in Sekiro. Uh, oh well, most swimming I've done in that game has involved going underwater. Well, you should try. All right. Well, anyways, I do need to go back to that game. But I'm playing Days Gone. Anyways, um, wow, next news topic. Going to pee. Nick, uh, do you like Days Gone more than Sekiro? Well, Sekiro is just kind of stressing me out right now. So Days Gone's a nice. Although Days Gone can be stressful too. What am mm. I doing to myself? Yeah, um, Epic has purchased Psyonix, the developer of Rocket League and mm-hmm. Nazgoth. <laughs> no, the developer Wait. of Nazgoth. <laughs> Wait, what? You yeah. just you just wanted to rub that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Psyonix, the developer of Rocket League and Nazgoth and uh-huh. rocket powered battle cars. Well, well, the, the bigger thing about this story. Is that Rocket League? Now that it's now that Psyonix is owned by Epic, Epic's going to pull it off Steam. Well, later allegedly. this year, yeah. Alleg- is that confirmed? I I think it's been confirmed. Uh, yeah, but, there, but, I think there was talk of this, uh, which that's not that's also kind of bearing the lead here a little bit. I mean, Epic is buying really successful studios. Yeah. I mean, Rocket League was ginormous, and it made Psyonix Sy- like huge. And Epic is just... I mean, it saved the studio. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, they did yeah. Nosgoth before that. <laughs> Wait, did um, we get any of this money? They bought our flag. <laughs> that is true. But, I mean, is this like... Is Epic going to continue to be buying smaller studios? Well, dude, I mean, I would I say... Would, no, 100% they're going Absolutely. To. They've got the they, money. They're rolling in Fortnite money now. Yeah, they got to so. spend it somewhere. 
Yeah, like they are in a position now where they can start making. Some <laughs> They're in a position to plays. do a lot of things. They're in a position to like, you know, put out a console or something. I, Fuck it, dude. Anything could happen. At no, this they point. don't need to because they have an you're engine. Right. Yeah. You're also, right. they, don't, they don't need to. But if they did, but if they did, they like imagine they have they have a built in like imagine if you could release a console that was just called the Epic console. It's yeah. Epic. There you go. It's fucking built in. It's Epic. No. Or the Unreal console. Hmm? Kind of stole mine. How about the Fortnite console? Sorry, I didn't console. mean to see your thunder. <laughs> or or buy our Fortnite, Fortnite console. Fuck. Uh, My Fort machine. Fortnite machine. Jesus. Um, no, they wouldn't do that. But it's still crazy, right? Like, they might be soon become, like, you know, the next fucking, you know, EA or, you know. Yeah. It's possible. They're I mean, making more money yeah. than EA these days, but like I'm saying, that that size of a publishing house, you know, could be crazy. They absolutely could, and they've also got that ten cent investment collect- money. So they're collectively making better or more interesting, at the very least, more interesting decisions than EA is. Mm-hmm. I don't even like Fortnite, so that's saying something. Um, next topic. Oh boy, what is this one? I forgot. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Sonic the Hedgehog. The movie has a trailer, and it's terrifying. Absolutely fucking terrifying. And actually, this story... Um, if you well, have a, Sonic is terrifying. Well, I mean, you're right. The, the movie just looks sort of bad, but Sonic himself is scary looking. One of, one of the best things I saw uh, was someone put the photo of him, and under 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 that they put one of the master shake from Aquatine Hunger Force and has a quote that says, uh, you look at him and tell me there's a God. <laughs> <laughs> it is, first of all, okay, so it is a horrifying creation that they've done, that they've put together here and the trailer just doesn't make the movie look great. I think Jim Carrey is going to be largely responsible for having to fucking carry that movie. He's going to throw out his back he, having to carry just, the fucking he's film. He's just kind of doing a bad Ace Ventura though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, like, like, how do you take a character like Dr. Robotnik and turn it into a real person on a movie. You know what I mean? I I mean, I guess Jim Carrey is a good choice for that. I mean, like, if you were... but What I don't understand, and this I've said this before, and maybe I don't think we were recording when I said this, but um, I I can't think of another video game property that is less suited to be turned into a movie than Sonic the Hedgehog. Maybe just underneath Super Mario Brothers. In this this format, as, like, this ultra-real-life thing where he's a fucking alien... He's coming to Earth to do he's something. He's not an alien. He's a hedgehog. Not only does it look bad, but like when they inject like the sound of like the sonic sound effects into it, it just like sounds weird. Up the fucking That's rings. dope. You need like, that at least. Right? No, I mean y- yes, you need it. But like that in conjunction with the way it looks, I'm, my brain is just mm, so confused. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised we haven't had a Sonic movie yet. I mean, to be honest, like why is this movie? I mean, first of all, if they were gonna make this movie, why didn't they just make it like some super stylized? Like animated movie or something. Like, why did they have to go? That would with be real... a lot better. I mean, like, they've been almost... making Sonic well, cartoons for decades. Well, yeah, that's what I say. Like, How a, does a Detective Pikachu version... come out and look a thousand times better? Because than... they have Pokemon yeah. money. Pokemon money is different <laughs> from Sonic. Yeah, money. yeah. <laughs> Sega does not have Pokemon money. Yeah. That is days. true. If Sega had Pokemon money, they'd still be putting out consoles. Uh, <laughs> and Joseph, yes, when I did make that reference to Super Mario Brothers, I am a, I am aware of the Super Mario Brothers movie, Nick. and I am also aware of how awful it was. Nick. Sega's slogan still stands. Sega does what Nintendo don't. Oh god. <laughs> like bad movies. Yeah. You're right. It still stands. Um the other part of the story which is actually just recently developed, I think is very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen this happen in a movie before. Maybe I'm just forgetting something. Um the director has come forward because, first of all, if you go watch this trailer on YouTube, or go, first of all, go look at the trailer on YouTube. It last time I checked, it had like uh twice as many downvotes yeah, as upvotes. Of course. Uh, yeah. it's not getting, it's getting, I didn't even look at the comments. I was kind of scared to look oh, at the I comments. Don't go there. Um, but it's getting ripped apart and the director came forward and said, we hear your criticisms loud and clear. We are going to redesign Sonic prior to, for, they, there is a trailer for this movie out there that it will forever exist. If, even if they come back and they fix Sonic and he looks better and that movie comes out and it's okay, there will forever be a trailer for this film with a horrifying <laughs> First, it's probably a lot yeah. more than just a trailer. King Carey and Chad has a point. Wreck It Ralph had a better looking Sonic than yes. the Sonic movie. <laughs> Make a Sonic movie that looks like Wreck It Ralph, and it, I would we wouldn't be having this conversation. To be totally honest, it's it's so weird. Like like 
the part where the dude comes into the like the the shack and sees Sonic and they they shoots look at each other dart. and he shoots him with the dart and Sonic is like screaming with his like human man teeth. Yeah. Like it is uncomfortable. One of my other favorite things is uh people have been uh you know adding in tails but they're using that really oh. weird looking stuffed fox <laughs> yeah that's just like photoshop to look like tails memes. colors um i think yeah. also jim carrey he looks terrible does he have the measles or something <laughs> i mean everybody's catching the measles i mean first of all are you talking about just the, he in general or like the way they chose to make it's him joke. look like it's, it's deep cut it's a i mean deep he's cut. like he's it's in too his... deep. oh i get it i get it because his He's anti-vax, is right? He, or Wait, really? His wife. I think so. No, no I think he is thought, too. Oh, Jenny, it was Jenny McCarthy who was the anti-vaxxer, right? No, I think they both are. Oh, god damn it! I think that kind of. Uh, I know Jim yeah. Carrey's crazy, but I hope he wasn't like anti-vaxxer crazy. Anyways, uh, think, man, poor Michael Hogan is in this film. I don't know how desperate he was for Wait, a fucking who's paycheck. Michael Hogan. Who the fuck's Michael, Michael Hogan? Hogan? He's done a bunch of lot of little B rolls, but his favorite role of mine was he was Saul Ty in Battlestar Galactica. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Okay. Wait, You'll know he was like when the you old see him general. In here. Oh, in this, in this yeah, the old colonel. Yeah, gotcha, the colonel gotcha. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 He was How also. Desperate. How do you fucking know his name? I love that show. Okay. He was also. What? what? How Nothing. Sure? Um, uh, it's. I know Jim Carrey is a crazy person. Whatever. The last I, shot of him in the trailer where he's in the desert, well, he, he looks more like he looks Dr. more like Doctor Robotnik. I was like, oh, see, I don't that know how kinda, they're gonna get from it point A to point B. Styli- it looked yeah. kind of stylized, and I was like, oh, that is actually probably the best shot of the trailer. Yeah. But like, anytime Sonic's on screen, it's fucking horrifying. Also, the the joke a bit with the uh, the main, what's the main character is standing there, and he has like the duffel bag, and Sonic's in the oh, duffel yeah. bag, and he's like, and he makes a noise, and someone's like, do you have a child in that bag, or, or is your child in that bag? And he's like, yes. Well. He's not my child. It's someone else's child. And I was just yeah. like, this is really uncomfortable. Yeah. He's making- well, no, it's weird. Is like, is <laughs> like people joke. are like, this, yeah, this guy's strange. And not like yeah. what he has. A, like the reaction to him having someone's kid, child in that bag was not the reaction you should have. Yeah. Yes. They no, were like, it should have been, I'm they were the like police. stepping away awkwardly. Yeah. 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 No one was calling the police. They were like, yeah, it was very. Can we just say for what? Like, we, like, this movie is going you know to be bad. To hold on, hold on. Jim Carrey needs to get that bag and needs to punt it down the hallway like an Ace Ventura <laughs> okay. at the beginning when he's like the package. The question is, guys, like how? First of all, this movie comes out in November, and they're talking about redesigning the main character of the movie in post production. Obviously, they can do that because it's an animated character, yeah. but like, that's a lot of work. It they, is, and that's also like you also got to. Think I hope about, they like, make him look worse. Yeah, See, the thing yeah, is there- <laughs> that'd be great. You also got to think about like who thought this was a good design in the first place. Like, how did we even get to this point where this? It was market a- research and focus groups that this decision came from. No. It wasn't from anybody with but a like, fucking brain. It, like, but like the the comment section on YouTube is like practically like a large focus group. It well, should the, be indicative the, the problem, of like, no. is, Nick, is events like this. It happens like when I was at Universal Studios, they come up to you like, hey, do you want to go watch this thing? And they just grab random people and they go make them watch. Yeah. Like, well, no, something. I know what a focus group I know, is. But that's what I'm saying. So it happened with Sonic and whoever watched it was like, this looks good. Um, and they you know, found a, they found a group of people, no, a no, large no. enough group I'm of sure, people. I'm sure they found plenty of people that were like, this looks stupid. But I know. But like, you got to think. They found a they found a large group of people to focus test this right, and a larger percent of them thought that was a good idea, mm-hmm. <laughs> or they were visually impaired. One of the two. Or I mean, that I don't know. They give them a bunch of drugs before. It was hear. it's weird. I can't. I hope they replace Sonic with that that advertisement for the Sonic costume with that kid in it who looks really awkward. You know what I'm talking about? Wait, which wait. There's there's like a there's like an like an ad from like a circular with a kid in like a Sonic costume and he just has this blank stare. I'll find it. <laughs> um, I just want you to know that despite how you think it looks and how most people think it it'll looks, do well. there has been gallons and gallons of oh. human semen spewed <laughs> because of this Sonic. Oh Specifically because of this Sonic, <laughs> gallons of semen spewed. All right. When you, went, you when you started to say the word gallons, I was like, I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. He's like, he's not gonna say come, and you didn't. No, you didn't. He did not. No. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> oh, I, it's I just fucking like true though. They, like even the people who are like, man, this looks terrible. They care so much. It's crazy. 
What a world we what a world we live in. It's crazy. Like I don't think when that trailer for like the Mario movie came out in the nineties, people were like there I don't think people's worlds were ending. People were like, Oh, you know, this looks stupid. Let me go about my day. But you look at threads for this Sonic trailer and they're so long, man. It's insane. I don't oh, want to. Man. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. We spent too much time on Sonic. All right, mo- next topic. Is there another topic? Wait, yes, there is another there, one. There is one more. All right, it's the one that I don't know much I can, about. I can get to the thing is, this, this was you, Chris Davis. This looks like a Chris Davis news topic. This is this is kind of big. So it should be in your four player minute. No. <laughs> Valve has officially unveiled their Index VR headset. Uh, it's shipping June twenty eighth. It's already fucking sold out. Sold out within like half an hour. What I find and strange is that they sold what? 10 I, can, of them? I think I, I feel like I follow these things pretty closely. I didn't even hear about this until you mentioned it. And, and you so they, they, they teased it a few weeks ago. There was like a, a, st- a store page people found. Yeah. And uh, now they've officially made it available for pre orders and shown off the tech specs. And yeah, the, the Vive thing wasn't actually Valve made, that was HTC. They just were yeah. like yeah. closely associated Yeah, they so just this one is actually made in house by Valve. Yeah. yeah, this is Valve. Technology. Well, Nick, what are they going to do? Make a video game? Of course, they're going to make a headset. But right. you're also so kind of burying the lead here. So yeah. So part of the thing with this announcement is that they also announced that a flagship IP game will ship this year for this the headset. It's happening. but they haven't told you what it is. They haven't said it's happening. Don't, Valve don't has you, so many flagship Nick, things. It's gonna be TF three. Don't you fucking do this. <laughs> it to doesn't me. matter what um, you can say. It's a tragedy. <laughs> Pick <laughs> any of them. It's a tragedy. Portal three. Now, if it's like some sort of Portal spinoff, that's cool, right? If Dude, it's Portal, portal three the VR, por- the Portal sure. VR s- mini game, the thing, the warehouse thing, that was pretty good. Sure. If this is a Portal spinoff. That's fine. If this is Portal Three and you, ha- this is the way you can play it. And that's it. That's a tragedy. No, I, I doubt it. No, yeah. There's been the joke, right, about Half Life Three being yes. like a VR exclusive for years, right? What if it's true? What if it happens? I mean, then I'm buying a fucking VR headset. All right. So, but the cool. Yeah, the, I mean, the, so the, the is that why people bought this thing? Is that why it sold out in minutes? No, because people no. want to find out people what they want. No, they, uh, there's a couple things about it. people are excited about VR. So there's, I mean, there's I'm excited about VR. It, it's it's got a lot of options as to how they how you can buy it and things like that with like the the base stations for tracking you know motion control and things like that. And the it's got its own set of controllers and things like that. One of the cool things is that the headset will be compatible with every VR game that's ever been released on Steam. No matter the headset format, yeah, so course. Oculus, Vive, whatever, it's going to work on this headset, which is pretty cool because proprietary, you know. But have they actually demoed their tech to like? Do people know if this is like a good headset or not? Because I feel like VR tech. I mean, maybe. I mean, they just unveiled. it. I know, but like maybe we're at the point now where it's okay to like well, assume it's going been, to be good. But I like, think so. they've I been think developing so. this tech for like two or three years now. Like they've had dedicated hardware VR teams yeah. that have been focused. It can't on. be worse than Lab VR, right? <laughs> oh. That's and, probably true. Yes. And another thing about uh-huh. it is that it's cheap. Just the headset is five hundred bucks. But you need more than like. The but it's better than the the top end headset right now, which is the Vibe Pro. But don't so you need more than just the headset? It's got a, it's got a higher resolution per lens, and it's got a wider FOV, and it's got code in there that really supposedly shuts down a lot of the problems people have with the 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 screen door uh effect of vr games oh you mean with the the well no like like you're looking through a screen door at the tech like you're seeing the pixels oh gotcha 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 yeah. oh okay i know what you're talking about yeah so they so they fixed that problem evidently so hey you know what i am a big enough you need more than the headset, i am excited though, enough I about vr technology to like if this is if this gets traction if like this ex- if, if they if, if they do announce Portal Three, it will be a tragedy. But if it's good, and this I will buy a VR headset to play that. Like, I don't know, I don't know. It's weird. I just find it weird that it was announced and pre-orders are already sold out. But like, I haven't heard much of anything about like how good well, it's the, like, it's actually Valve, is. Valve and Valve is so You're like, right. But like, yeah. Valve has also lost a lot of uh, goodwill or good faith, right? I guess you know what. Well, right now, everyone's they have a sucking lot of money though. Right now, everyone hates Epic so much that everyone's cuddling up with Valve. Mm-hmm. What if, uh, 
What if that mystery IP is fucking Left 4 Dead in VR? What if they so called it? They us. only have so many things. What if they called it Left 5 Dead and like the VR? As I, will, in the... I will come over there and slap the shit out of you. <laughs> I now. will only be okay with like Dota or Counter Strike. Okay. <laughs> if this is TF2, a TF3, if this is Portal 3, if this is Left 4 Dead 3, this is Half Life 3, it's a tragedy. Well,. I'm, what I'm, if it's Gary's Mod VR? I mean, it could be no IP, too, so you never know. No, it said flagship, flagship IP. Like, I mean, IP. It's, this could be launching a flagship IP for them. That's no, not how that but works. Like, not what but, they mean. But IP, new IP is never does not automatically become flagship. Like, flagship yeah. is like you, something that's established that flagship you know Flagship means good. fucking Half-Life! Yeah. Or Counter-Strike. Yeah. Dude, I'm so okay. Pavlov's, Dude, whatever it's called for the VR, has been doing really, really well on Steam. And it's basically like some, bu- some guys third-party VR take I on mean, the, Counter-Strike. The problem with the that maps is, are basically the same. Well, the problem with that is that's a recent event. They haven't been yeah. working on this for two months. They've been working on this for years, most likely. So I'm, I don't think the I'm just I don't saying. think the sales of this game that just came out were, are gonna like, play into spurred their them to like make a VR like shooter game. You know I'm what? Saying Counter-Strike I'm, VR sounds very reasonable. I'm fascinated to find out what this is. You know what? If you if you want to look at VR as a technology and think about what would be the best. Uh, best decision as far as an ip to launch with this thing to like show off the tech mm-hmm. i think it'd be portal yeah portal and vr would be fucking amazing yeah absolutely especially if it was a brand new kind portal. of vomit inducing though right potentially potentially that's why it <laughs> but is. also it could i think be. the the reason i think oh god ha- can you imagine falling into an endless mm-hmm. loop in vr <gasps> the reason i think half-life 3 <laughs> is realistic is because my guess is the reason it's been so long since so long since we've played a Half-Life game is because they are horrified that that the next Half-Life might come out without some like insane leap in tech. Which yeah, because that's that's that was the point of Half-Life one and two. They were technology demonstrators. Yeah. yeah. And and like I'm guessing there's been a lot of versions of Half Life Three over the years and that they have not been happy with it. Yeah. You know, where it's at. I think they think it has to be like groundbreaking and if it's not that they don't want to release it. So you make it, it a lot of that going around. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know probably portal. A couple other things that have been going on, valve wise, kind of off topic. Uh that sounds like a, a great four player minute. About a month ago, uh somebody released some Source two screenshots of a Left for Dead project. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, that was set in uh, Marrakesh. This trailer thing Africa. though is like confirmed fake from today, right? It is. The, yeah, they it, it's it's ninety nine percent debunked. But that being said, that that trailer, it was really well done. Hey. But 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 it's probably fake. It's fake. Yeah. Real quick on the topic of VR, did you hear that you can hook up a PSVR to your Switch and play? Um, play uh, Zelda in VR with the PlayStation headset. PlayStation VR. Uh, the only thing that doesn't work is the head tracking. Mm. But okay. you're playing with a real headset. You can play with a pro controller, and it's like 3D VR. Interesting. Mm. And all you need is the PSVR in your in your PS4. How well does it run though? Wait, how, wait, what? How would you even do that? Uh, because of the the mo- the mode that it outputs, it can output that VR signal. To another device, so you're outputting it to like the PSVR. But how do you? But what do you act? How, where does the switch connect to the VR? Is what I'm confused about. Through like HDMI cables in your PS4, like, like you. There's videos on how to do it. You're unhooking various I'm cables from your PSVR this. and you're hooking them up. Is it good though? Like when you play it with the headset, better That's than like the Labo? Or well, the problem is. Well, first of all, you're using a real headset and you're not literally holding it up to your face with the Joy-Cons because that's how you play it. You know that, right? Yes. Oh, God. You play it with the Joy-Cons while holding the VR It's good for your posture, your face. Brad. It's good for yeah, your posture. Now you can play it with a PSVR headset, which is you know, quite Prince comfortable. Prince of the Universe and says it's kind of complicated, but you plug your v- PSVR box into the Switch dock. Yeah. Wow. Um, I hear the only good thing that came out of that VR patch was that it improved a lot of the load times for uh, Breath of the Wild. Huh. That's I, it. I did hear about that. Well, that's awesome. That's um, nice. So, yeah, it's it's kind of weird. But, uh, and yeah, it's not going to be amazing. Obviously, the Switch is not Built very... That. It's not even power... It's not powerful enough to render VR well. Mm-hmm. So, I've not heard great things about it, but... All right. Well, that's that's going to do it for news this crazy week. crazy weird, right? Um, but now it is time, of course, 
It is Patreon time, right? Right, yes, Nolan? Are you is. ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Do you have a list of new patrons? Uh, we have no new patrons. We have no new patrons? Nope. Did we well, thank... Oh, wait, we did. Yes, Never mind, we that did. was last week. You're right. Yep. Damn it! Well, if you want to support us on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash 4player. Anyways, we have questions we do. from our supporters on Patreon. We do have questions. So let's get to those questions. Of course, I, I when I reload the tab, it like refreshes. Uh, all right, so first question this week from Umos. Umos. Which video game has respected your time the least? Oh, man, I feel bad saying this. Red Dead Redemption 2. Fuck off. Ooh. Fuck off. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I feel bad saying this considering it was on my top 10 last year, but Assassin's Creed Odyssey, man. Mm. Like, that's that's a good one. So much of that game, as much as I love the sh- traversing the world and the ship and everything, that game was like 80 hours, and it, I'd say like a solid 10 to 15 hours of that was spent traveling on the ocean. And I'm just, you know, maybe, maybe that's partially my fault because i didn't i refused to fast travel yeah <laughs> yeah sounds like it's your fault but man i don't know well, I, I, I feel like there is su- there is such a thing as a world that is too big and i didn't well, no, really so feel that, that way until i played assassin's creed Odyssey. well that's what i want to say i think there's there's a lot of open world games that the have like you know collectibles strewn throughout the game and like the rewards you get for collecting them are negligible to like pointless and i think that's uh, th- like games like, and i'm having trouble thinking of some of the top of my head i mean don't get me wrong the assassin creed series does kind of do that to an extent like oh go collect all of these things and now you get a hat yeah but there's also fun. but th- there was uh, the draw more from like, especially with assassin creed odyssey and and then or origins and then odyssey a lot of the draw of exploring the world, though, was, like, there's a lot of, like, stories and, like, cool shit yeah. to find, like, narrative-wise and maybe some cool weapons or armor. Um, but I think Odyssey went a little too far and it got to the point where, like, you're finding so much shit that, like, you're never going to use 90% of it because, you know, most you have, you have a certain armor set or a certain set of weapons that mm-hmm. you know are better than everything else you're going to find. Mm-hmm. And you're finding, like, just... I had, like hundreds of fucking things in my inventory and i was like i'm not Wait, gonna Nick, use you know you can like sell yeah those, no, right? i'm just kidding I, like i'm saying over down. the course of the game oh, i went through gosh. hundreds of pieces of armor that i never wore once well yeah it's because by the time you've like finished combat and you're, you sit back and all right let me look at what i got you've gotten new armor or something else already yeah that's better than the one you just picked up or you'll pick up something in that game it's like oh shit i can't use this yet because i'm not a high enough level and by the time you hit that level you've already gotten something else that's better than that yeah. one yeah. yeah no that, that game had a problem with my that. follow-up question for this question though is can we define more openly what not respecting your time is well I, th- I think i think a prime example would it would be something like like you know like a quest or a story beat or something that has no real reward it serves no purpose you don't get anything from it uh, you know certain and dragon age inquisition not inquisition Inquisition? Yeah, yeah, Inquisition. Um, there was multiple like quest lines where it's like you find a piece of paper and it's like, oh, go get ten feathers. You did it. Yeah, great job. Like, what the fuck was the point of? Don't waste my time with shit like that. Yeah, like if it's not me interacting with a person, you know, like like the exact opposite of that is something like Witcher Three, which yeah. everything had a reason for being there, had a story, beat. and yeah, almost it, everything it had like a really satisfying a narrative. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It in, never yeah. was. It never felt like something I did in The Witcher was a waste of my time. Where, like, yeah, that's, what about that's kinda would how Fallout I, be an example? Of, I mean, I, Fallout definitely had some quests. I mean, even talking about time waster, let's talk about Fallout 76. Oh I don't yeah, respect my time. I feel like that is time <laughs> yeah. waster the game. Yeah, but you know, I, I, I would definitely say that some uh, there's a lot of things in the Fallout series that have been like that. But that's I think also because that world is so big that they it got to the point, and I'm sure Inquisition. I mean, I, I did listen to Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. You know, suffered from certain things similar to that. But it's like you know you design this open world, and it's like well fuck now we got to fill it with stuff. Yeah. And it's like well I can't just have this giant area have nothing in it, so let's just throw some random shit in there. Yeah. Um. And it for me. It's it's almost one of those things where that's a tough line to toe. Do I give a character or a player this big vault to explore and only have one or two things in there and the rest of it's kind of nothing? Or do I let them open every single fucking drawer and find spoons and knives and hats and all this crap? And it's like, oh my God, I don't fucking care. But like, it's that was my problem. That's my problem with Fallout. I can't play that game and not open every goddamn drawer. I have to look Bioshock around. Bioshock Infinite had that issue too where like you... 
you're constantly rummaging through shit, but it was all just kind of pointless. Like There's like nothing there. It's like it's Little like you know, items. don't cash. Don't, that's about it. Well, yeah, mm. but it's like don't give me all the shit I can interact with, and literally, like, there's no point to any of it. Yeah, uh, I, I think. I guess you could say a game doesn't really respect your time also when it's like, say it has like really bad like checkpointing and expects you to like repeat certain sections like Mm, over and over again, Mm. Um, you know, or like phases of a boss that are like really easy or like maybe there's like an unskippable cutscene or something at the beginning of the boss and and it's like Mm. you have to do it over and over again just because it might be really hard. What was I playing? That's definitely not respecting your time. What what was I playing very recently? Grind, yeah, yeah, for sure. What was the game that I played very recently this year that... Sekiro. No, I don't think it was Sekiro where I had to fight... Devil May Cry. No, I had to fight a boss that was super fucking hard and then right after I did that I had to beat another boss. Resident Evil 2. I, no. I was getting super frustrated. Hollow Knight? No. Oh, yes! Knight. Yeah, Hollow Knight. But no, I would never say this about Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight yeah. doesn't waste my time. <laughs> you just but did! You're right. That fucking shit, that was one instance where Hollow Knight really fucked me over. All I right. was like... Let, let's move on. Nick we, we hates got, Hollow Knight. We have more questions. We, get, we have a lot more questions. All right. Uh, next question this week from Metal Button. Also, wait, before, sorry, before you go on, no. uh, A-Shift in chat, A-Shift 96, I see that you pledged tonight. Thank you for being a new supporter on Patreon. Thanks. Thanks, dude. Boom. Thanks, dude. Appreciate Appreciate thank you, dude. All right, sorry. The metal button says, "Rate the death con- uh, consequences that affect the world in from software games: Demon Souls, World Tendency, Dark Souls, Human to Hollow, Sekiro, Dragon Rot." A quick rundown of world tendencies: Dying while human would move you towards black tendency, and killing a boss in your game or a summoned phantom would move you towards white. Explains the suicide blood stains often found in the Nexus. FromSoft would often change the world tendency on their servers during holidays, such as change to pure black on Halloween or pure white on Christmas. That's obviously the most, I think, interesting and complex thing they've done, and they haven't done it since. Yeah, they haven't done it since then. So are you saying that's your favorite? People also suicided a lot because there well, were certain good said, grind spots. He said rate, rate the death consequences. In, so are, in are we saying like rate them in terms of like Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Sekiro? How the how the consequences oh, of death? The world the tendencies game. were the harshest for sure. I think. Yeah. Uh, I I mean I feel like Sekiro's is probably the weakest. Yeah. Of them. In all honesty, it's pretty it, it inconsequential. Really I mean, I would say Dark Souls Two is probably the harshest, right? What was the world? Because when you uh, when you died, you know you, you lost your humanity. Every time you died further, you lost more of your. Oh health. right, yeah, but only up was to that half, and you get a fucking ring. Yeah, it's like the same as you can you can very easily like alleviate those symptoms. Yeah, but the point is that that, that existed. Yeah, I mean, I, was that exclusive to, to Dark Souls Two? I think that was only. But Dark Souls. Demon yeah, Souls, I, that I think it was like the whole server. Yeah, and Demon like Souls if was if other harsher. people were suiciding, it would affect your game. Yeah, hmm. that's pretty fucking brutal. It was. Uh, all right, let's move on. Next I question. don't know where I don't know if how if we rated those per se, or we just said, or we were just saying how hard. How yeah. Fuck, yeah okay. a, uh, live at the Milky Way asks. I'm gradually trying to 100% complete the witness without Ooh. looking anything up. Ooh, it takes fun. a lot of time Good and luck. patience. I know you guys don't have that. I apologize <laughs> right. if you've already addressed this on the show, but those of you that played it, how far did you get? Did you finish the main through line? How much extra stuff did you do? I think uh, a lo- most of us finished. I think the we main finished it. Line. I mean, I, I got to the very I end. You did, right? I didn't play. It. Yeah, so I saw the three credit, of us at least. I, I saw credits roll. Yeah. Um, I I know I didn't hundred percent it. Uh, but Brad I, discovered the secret ending and quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that is brutal. But uh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Most of us here played most of it, and you know, we got to the point where we had, we got a conclusion. We saw an ending. Uh, we I got most didn't go much of the farther lasers, than that, but. Yeah, I will say. I'm trying to think of what oh, I got. The, I got all the lasers. Oh, all the extra stuff would be like all of the environmental stuff. I didn't. Get no, all no, those. not even that. There's a, there's a, plenty of puzzles in the game you don't have to do. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean you only uh, have. To, I don't really know. How to you only have to unlock the seven lasers, right? Yeah, to get to unlock. But there's eleven, I think. Yeah, I think I did all of. Them. Yeah. So uh, I did like eight or nine of them. I, I did. I did a lot of it, and I never looked anything up. That's something I'm. I'm like, I guess, proud of. Um, I, I. I'm sure I got rid of it all, but I went through of... almost an entire steno pad. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. There, like, like I've, I've said it before, but it was like a beautiful mind where we had like just paper strewn across the room of me and Bernadette trying to fucking solve some of these puzzles. Um, but yeah, I, I will say that there were definitely some that we never ended up solving. I, I, I vividly remember this one section that was kind of like a almost. There's a bunch of little buildings and on one of them there was just one puzzle and i 
for the life, I couldn't fucking figure it out. Yeah, I to definitely saved my life. It. I could not figure out how to do that puzzle, and to this day, I haven't done it. And I've actually been thinking about going back and replaying The Witness. I've been seeing it a lot on sales it and stuff. It was free on Epic. Yeah, it was, it was free on Epic. I mean, I already have it on Steam, so I'm not that game. On Steam. Uh, that game is our was our collective game of the year for that year. If you look at if you count all of our votes in yep, terms of how math, we, yeah. it was our. What about game of now year. that you finished Hollow Knight? Do you think Hollow Knight is our collective for that year? I mean, you can't go it, back. It, now that I've finished things. it, if I go back, it would have been Pretty probably high. my number one or two <laughs> on my list that year, which mm. would have probably pushed it up. Mm. Uh, um, all right, moving on. Next question for Mr. Green Toast. After seeing that horrendous live action Sonic trailer, what other video game mascots would you see fit? Uh, per, <clears throat> would you see fit perfect for Hollywood to screw up? Hmm. Ooh. We already have a we do have a Mario movie coming. I can Universal. picture a live action Jack and Daxter. Mm. I don't know who would play Jack, but I'm sure they could find someone creepy. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Blasto, because they couldn't do it justice because Phil Hartman is dead. That's true. I was gonna say uh, like a Samus. I can see them trying yeah. to do like a Metroid and just completely fucking yeah, there's, up. There's like, no way that would be good. other M. Yeah, because like they would do of... it live action, and then you would suddenly have to start thinking about the logistics of like, how does she roll up into a ball like that? Yeah. Why does it look so weird? They'd Why? have to write a what story is... with like dialogue yeah. and stuff. Oh, yeah. oh shit! Unless it's like Wall-E, you yeah. know, <laughs> the first dude, half of Wall-E. Dude, can you picture? Can oh my god, can you imagine a like a feature length Metroid movie with no dialogue that is like super artsy and stuff? Like, oh, I'm just saying. Yeah. That would be dope. It would never happen, but it that would, would never be sick. happen. But it would be dope. I think we're going too classic with these. I think that oh, I, I would division. expect a Fallout movie. <laughs> a Fallout movie. I mean, that's definitely we've, something we've seen that's plenty going... of post-apocalyptic movies. Yeah, yeah it, that, so it, that'll you got exist the foundation someday. that's pretty easy to do, but like it's just like. But what, look, what are they going to screw up? It looked like the Book of Eli. Pit, Pit Boy? Vault Boy? What are they going to... I don't know. The they, question was, how are they going to screw up the characters? Uh, how about... Uh, the uh, mascot. Riders. Well, first of all, just to go back back to Jack and Daxter, I'm imagining Daxter now looking creepy as fuck like mm-hmm. Sonic. With a live, act, with a live action like Jack. A real weasel. Or a real weasel. Mm-hmm. With like no actual animation, just yeah. have him like running around and then just like put a voiceover over him. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be cool if they made a movie based on that... Uh, what is it? Batman? Batman Arkham? <laughs> yeah, Arkham dope, games? Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, there were there were actually Oh, they some... are making a Saints Row movie. That's, that, they, that's they, they announced that. Week. Why yes. are they picking the weirdest shit? But the thing is, Dude, look at the director who's doing it. I've, who is it? F. Gary Gray. Who did what? He did uh, uh, Straight Outta Compton. He did Fate of the Furious. He's just wrapping up Men in Black International. Okay. I could see That it. looks bad, by the way. I watched the trailer for that. I think it looks bad. Oh, I think it looks. It fun. looks all right. It looks fun. It I, looks. I fun. love Thor and Valkyrie. Right, fun. I love Means Thor and Valkyrie. <laughs> Thor and Valkyrie doing fucking Men in Black. Listen, right, I anyway. like Thor and Valkyrie. I didn't like this trailer. Let's move on. Next question from By the Goddess: uh, Who would be more successful in a quest for treasure, Laura Croft or Nathan Drake? And obviously, explain why. Hmm. I'd say hmm. Laura Croft. She's been doing it longer. And well, no, I mean modern Lara Croft, she kind of sucks. She yeah. probably would wouldn't. She probably but get all. I'm sad. trying to be objective here, right? If you think, if you look at those characters and how they're portrayed in both those sets of games, they are both incredibly knowledgeable about world history and 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 you know but, geography and all that. But Lara shit Croft you would has need. the money and resources, and I think she also has the bag of tools to use. That's Drake true. Has tools. She's also hand. solved way more puzzles than no, uh, but what I would Nathan say Drake has. Nathan Drake has a bigger cast of characters to help him. He has more That's friends true. that can That's help true. him on his adventures, also, that can get him knowledge and back him money-wise and also, stuff like that. If but, you look at... Sorry, if we're, sorry, if we're he just... He runs a salvage company. If we're strictly Lara talking Croft about... Is rich. She comes from old money, though. If so we're strictly talking yeah. new Lara Croft, mm-hmm. I'm going to give it to Nathan Drake because... Laura Croft in that trilogy has made some terrible decisions. Oh, like have... Nathan Drake hasn't made bad <laughs> decisions? That's what this... Okay, you need to replay the Uncharted games. All right, maybe I will. <laughs> don't right after I finish this... Persona 5. Wait, don't what, threaten what about somebody Kingdom with a good time. That's true. Nathan Kingdom Drake needs, needs his friends. Yeah, Otherwise, he he's, he's very does. self-destructive. Also, if he loses his little book, he can't solve a puzzle. <laughs> Laura, Croft, Laura Croft is more independent as an explorer. Animal She's woman. also better at diving headfirst into rock. Yeah, she would just she'd like <laughs> fall on a spike and she that would be she it. takes the most violent deaths. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh man! So what's the what's the verdict here? Nathan Drake. I think Sully is the most successful. <laughs> there you go. Oh, uh, God. All right, moving on. Fuzzy Turd. I'm gonna give it to Nathan Drake. Oh, Voice Lord. acting has become pretty important in the industry and can make or break a game in some cases. Mm. What are some examples of iconic voice work, and what are some personal favorites? Ooh. Well, first of all, I think, I think, uh, I immediately think of Red Dead Redemption Two. I think Arthur Morgan. I think that entire cast of characters is fucking incredibly well done. But Arthur Morgan in particular and John Marston are two of some of the most best realized through vocal work. So, so that that was ever. kind of my biggest complaint going into Red Dead Redemption Two was Arthur didn't do it for me like John did. You mean from looking at like pre-release? Before. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it, looking back on Red Dead Redemption Two, John was so unique. And dynamic, and just the way he spoke, and Arthur just kind of sounded like a guy. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, as Red Dead Redemption 2 went on, and his character developed, I liked him more. Yeah. But I would say from a voice acting perspective, I still feel John that John's uniqueness, and just his, like, the, like, the gruffness in his voice, and, like, I, I still true, feel that true. that adds a little bit more. Well, I would I would suggest Little Year Solid, obviously. Hey, David Hayter, yeah, is David absolutely Hader's incredible. I would, I would suggest Bioshock. Wait, these are all time? Bioshock. Or- yeah. Wait, what voice awesome. acting in Bioshock are you referring to specifically? Atlas. Okay. I think Geralt from uh, uh, the Witcher series is really good. Also, uh, Queen Me from Thronebreaker last year. Amazing. Me was good, yeah. Half-Life uh, 2. Alex and... and oh, Alex Half-Life. was good. Also, the year Alex before that, Magi Lu from Tales of Berseria. Um, I mean, I got She gotta, does Cassie Cage. And I got to give it to, to Troy Baker... From Last of Us. Last, I mean that. that yeah, Troy Joel. Baker and uh, what? Uh, what's what's who? What's her um, name? Plays Ellie. I can't remember her name. All of a sudden, someone well, help me since out. Since you check. just said it, now I can't remember. So, they both do fantastic work in. Uh, uh, she was the daughter in Growing <clears throat> Pains. Um, oh my God. God damn it! The daughter in Growing Pains. Yeah. Ellen Page. Wait, no, 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 no. Ellen God damn it, Page. Prince of the Universe. Fuck you. you it's not Ellen Page. Did a Kappa thing. Heather Ashley Bailey. Johnson. No, oh, Ashley, Ashley God. Johnson. People Nick. are throwing God. wrong names. At they all they all sound familiar. Ashley Johnson. I Laura was like, Bailey is really good. Laura Bailey is good. I like damn how it. none of us are mentioning any David Cage games. Ashley. I mean, no. I guess is Ashley Johnson's the daughter from Growing Pains. Yeah. yeah. Like, huh? Like. Little daughter? Yes, the little... That's Ashley Johnson. Oh, how old is she? I'm 90% sure that's her. Well, I can look it up really real quick old. to be safe, but I'm pretty sure that's her. Um, <sighs> any 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 other... Uh... Mm, 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 mm. I mean... I mean, there's so many. You want to talk about... I mean, just look at... If you looking, while we're looking at Naughty Dog, I mean, fucking... Uh, like all the characters Nathan in Drake? Ashley effect? Johnson was uh, Chrissy Seaver. Let me see what... Uh, uh oh! There's probably some good ones in Mass Effect too. Um, eh. I'm I mean, like I still like I'm, Morden. I'm still trying. I mean, Morden. Morden's good, but Garrus? like, yeah. like, is that like a fucking like best a, of all time? Yeah, best yeah, of all not. time. Maybe defining not. voice acting like great performance. Maybe not. Who? We're talking about Mass, some of the characters oh. in Mass Effect. What about like Garrus or Rex? I mean, there's yeah. so many good. All right, we need to move on. We spent too much oh, time sorry. on this. Next question from Sunny. Uh, what are three things you can say about your favorite video game, but not your girlfriend or wife? Ooh. First of all, if we all sat here and thought of three of those, <laughs> it would take us Three forever. things from our favorite video game? Well, three things you can all, say about know your know favorite, my, video game favorite video game that you can't is. say about your wife or girlfriend. Uh, first of all, this is too much to think of. <laughs> trying to think uh, of on the spot My here. favorite video game was developed in Japan. <laughs> Like, when you're being, when you take it, when you're so, to, you're very literal about it. You could say a lot of things about it. Uh, oh my god! Uh, my favorite video game has fucked me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Final Fantasy wait, Tactics. No, Brad, things can be you cor- can't say about your wife. Oh, okay. Wait, I got, I got that. I, I interpreted the question wrong. <laughs> Uh, I traded mine into GameStop for four dollars. That's good. <laughs> well, that is, that good. is good. Thank you, King Carrie. I got to give props to you for that one. Uh, oh uh, God! Oh, what? Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Nope. Oh God. It's short. I'm, it doesn't take long to beat. Oh. Oh That's no! Terrible. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. I mean, it works. 
and you can't say oh my oh, god what's your favorite game next question <laughs> this is a good yeah. question yeah. actually what is somebody come up with some better wait chris so davis chris it. davis i gotta wait what is your favorite game or were you just was that I'm just, just a throwing joke that out there. oh <laughs> like, i feel like in final fantasy tactics you have to grind really hard uh, you know what? Let's move on. Yeah, this is too much. There's this, first of all, this is too dangerous of a question. It's going to lead yeah. to some pretty raunchy stuff that Terrible maybe we don't stuff. maybe we don't want to get into. But thank you for it the end. You have to be, be cut sexual that line, right? No, was, I mean, it you, doesn't have to be sexual. When I'm done with it, I put it on the shelf. Next question. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Illumination. You wake up suddenly in the middle of the night. What would be the scariest sound to hear after waking up? Oh well, I don't know why you Sonic from the Sonic. The trailer. moment you said that, mm-hmm. I thought, okay, that, that's a close second. <laughs> God damn it, that's a close second. The the moment I, I you said that, I thought of uh, I immediately thought of Hereditary that for whatever reason, and that shit Hereditary. that shit freaks me the fuck out. If I heard if I woke up in the middle of the night and heard that, I would probably die. Or if I heard Brad's creepy clown voice, if I heard any voice. <laughs> Yeah, if I heard any voice that wasn't supposed to be in the room, <laughs> yeah, I think that would count. Mm. <sighs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> you know, I was, you know, I just, I just imagine like someone breaks into your house and you wake up and you just hear them like farting. I don't know, <laughs> you're just like, like what the fuck? Is you know, that? Brett, when you were playing that that compilation of the evolution of Raiden's, Raiden's like yeah. call and then Chris Davis was like you should make that your your text message thing and I was like imagining leaving my phone off of silent while sleeping and then someone texting me in the night and waking up to that noise would be uh, horrifying and confusing and yeah I that's mean, a the, bad idea the Chris worst Davis. sound of the world that's is still wonderful. whatever my alarm clock is set to uh, yeah true What's the future, Brad? So I don't have an alarm clock anymore. My watch just vibrates to wake me up. So it's a lot nicer than being jarred awake. I do I do miss that about my... I used to have a Fitbit that did that. Yeah, yeah that but nice. I don't know. I feel like you need that shock. Why? I don't know. I don't adrenaline rush. No, it's not adrenaline. It's like anger. I don't want to be fucking like mad when I wake up. I, I mean, like a fucking fire alarm going off in your house. I, focus, I, like, I woke up yesterday to my cat... In the bathroom on the on the kitchen or in the bathroom. There you counter. go. That's the sound. Vomiting. The no, no, not vomiting. vomiting. No, I've woke that's up. That's the worst, terrible, most terrifying. I've heard sound that. No, pooping. she was sitting on the counter, staring herself in the mirror, and she's deaf. She can't hear herself, so she was like meowing, and she doesn't know how loud she's being. So she's literally going Aah! Aah! like over and over again. Yeah, that was. And like the only she can't hear you. I can't yell at her. She won't know what I, I'm. So I you had to like throw I had to walk in there and like pick her up. I had to get out of bed, and that was just not cool. Sorry, right, we're so off topic. On. We got now. more questions. More questions uh, from Zero Skies. Do you dip or scoop when eating tortilla chips? Tortilla chips with a side like salsa. Dip uh, or scoop? What's scoop. the difference? Well, if you dip, you just wet the oh, chip. If you scoop, oh. you get a. It, it depends get, on what. It, it is being dipped in. It, de- or it depends on the consistency of the salsa. If it's like a chunkier salsa, you want to scoop so you can get all the tomatoes and stuff on there. If it's like a like a more liquidy or like watery Maybe salsa, like queso, then you, you dip it. Yeah, yeah. Queso, you don't really need to scoop. You can just dip queso pretty much. Also consider the shape of the chip too. That's also a consideration to take. Yeah. So you don't want to scoop with a flat chip. That'd be dumb. Have you ever no. had? Uh, I think it's called Julio's chips. They have like seasoning on them. I think so. I've never heard of these before, and like I found out they're like a thing. You can get them at HEB. They have this like seasoning on them, and holy shit, they're really yeah, fucking good. Like a seasoning those. salt, or like kind a, of. But okay. yeah, but what, what's the back look like? It's uh, yellow. Hmm. I think I might have. I like, think a I bag have had that. Hmm. Uh, I do remember like let's eat chips before. later. Yeah. Well, the bag only has like. If four we ever finish this show, we'll get some chips. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so next uh, question from oh yeah, uh, she fifty one minutes ago. Oh man. Uh, so yeah, I guess I hadn't. Oh, I lo- he, uh, became a patron after I had checked uh, new patrons. Cool. Um, with the decriminalization in coming to Texas, will any of you guys partake? Slash have any of you ever? <laughs> do uh, we should like? Have I ever? Yes. Have a? Will I? Do I plan to partake? Have a? I've have been a tricked. podcast, right? Just a. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I mean, maybe <laughs> if it's legal, why not? When's when's the? Uh, what is that? 
how long will that take though? I don't know. Probably another year, right? Before it's decriminalized. Probably. Yeah. I thought it was supposed to be decriminalized this fall. Hmm. I don't or know. Just, just hemp. Ask us again. And it's not really decriminalized. It's just that you're not gonna they're not gonna take you to jail if you have anything. It's if less you have an ounce. if you have less than an ounce. Honestly, fine. it's just like a two hundred dollar fine. Honestly, I'll have to have a conversation with my current employer because yeah. I actually don't know what the so, policy well, so yeah, is. So yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's the thing. Just actually, I think we'd all have to. Just I mean, because I, it's not, I know why you de- said it. Just, just because it's decriminalized does not mean your employer can is still okay with it. They can yeah. always be like, no, yeah. But you know, and like I was told when I got hired that like hired. there might be occasional <laughs> there might be occasional drug testing or whatever. I have never have never Same happened. Here. Mm-hmm. So. So knock on some wood. Oh, that's not wood. Sorry. No. <laughs> Let's. Anyways, uh, we right. we were talking about birth control, right? Yes. Uh, that's all the questions from our patrons. We do have some questions <laughs> from our supporters on Twitch. Yes, we do. Uh, first question from them uh, comes from Thorax. In the recent Sonic trailer, they chose Gangster's Paradise oh of all God. things to put in the background. Oh my God, I forgot about that. <laughs> Name a gang or game or movie where the music did not match the scene. First of all, why did they pick Gangster's Paradise? Uh, yeah, I, I cannot game. think of anything that was so, like... There was a love-making scene in Watchmen... That I oh, remember having the, a really inappropriate the, the, song. The heavenly chord, like a aim, like a no, hold on, what was it? Wait. Hallelujah chorus or whatever. <laughs> no, yeah. You know what? Any movie with Hallelujah, it's usually ba- bad, use poorly of done. Uh, but yeah, man, yeah, that, I can't that, remember that, hating that. That was scene. that was very bad. I do remember that. Now. I can't think of any right off the top of my head, but man, that Gangster's Paradise use was awful. Like what the fuck? I th- I remember yeah. I read it somewhere recently, and I don't remember what it was. Someone said that fa- like Coolio famously had like a problem using that song in something else, uh-huh. and they're like, "But he was totally cool with he, using he, it in Sonic." Yeah. Like, what the fuck? No, no, he, he Dangerous wouldn't allow Paradise. Weird Al Yankovic to parody it. Uh, That's actually. what it was. Yeah. But he was totally cool da- with them Dangerous using. Well, I mean, I guess he eventually no, Dangerous did. Minds? Yeah, Weird Al did. Da- parody what, it. what was the yeah. fucking Wasn't movie it? with Michelle Pfeiffer from? Dangerous Minds. Dangerous, Dangerous Minds. Minds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was a good use of the song. Uh, right. I think that's what he wrote the song for. Yeah. Yeah, that was on the soundtrack for that movie. I mean, the, the problem is that most modern trailers these days, they take like 70s and 80s songs and do like, you know. Slow down. Well, I mean, no, slow that's, down. That's, 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 that's the nostalgia yeah. factor is kicking in right now. Yeah. And all of those people are of that age. That that's what they it's like. It's the trendy thing to yeah. do now, too. Like, it started in video games, too. Yeah. You know, no. like, I remember the Gears of War trailer that was playing. Uh, Mad World. Mad, Mad World. World and, like, yeah. how many trailers have we seen now that use Mad World? Oh, yeah. Like For some fun. reason, like the first thing doesn't come to like bad stuff. It comes to um, I can't remember. If it, I think it was Saints Row three. Uh, where, like when you're trying to, I, it was three or four. I can't remember. Like uh, the beginning where you're trying to stop the rocket or whatever. Oh yeah, and it plays uh, Aerosmith. Uh, oh, uh, I was thinking of uh, when it plays the Kanye West song. Um, uh, that's that. That's that's when you're jumping off the plane. Yeah, I think that's that was four. That was I think amazing. Three is the one where you're like, um, what is that song? Uh, Three has. Planned. I forget don't what it is, but you're like going in and you're gonna go into the skyscraper. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Get that as your hideout. Yeah, yeah. I don't, like don't want to miss a thing or whatever that song. Oh, don't want to yeah. miss a thing. Or yeah. yeah, that's when you're. It used that song in the yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, so that was four. Maybe that was the beginning of four, and then towards the end when you get the power armor. And it starts. Oh, so it's three. Okay, three is power. Three, three has the power. 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 And that one fits. As I'm saying, that game has a lot of music that they fucking Ooh. like. Perfect. I when thought of a good one. The the. Uh, Oh baby, you you uh, got, got what, what I, I need. need. Yeah, that is a good one. I will say, uh, say just the uh, the use of uh, in Halo Two, the Breaking Benjamin song. Oh God, totally out of place. Like uh, what the fuck? That was weird. Well, Not it wasn't men- just that; it, it was where it was used. It was, it was, it was where it was used was weird, and also it was like it's like the only song on the entire soundtrack that is <clears> not like original. Like it's we. It's like why? 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 You have a beautiful soundtrack. Like, I like Breaking Benjamin. I don't know why that was in that game. Yeah, it makes no that sense. That was a good one. G- 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 um, yeah, for some reason, I don't remember all the, any bad ones. I just remember all the good ones. It's easier to remember good ones because I yeah. think those are more common. I just remember in, uh, in GTA Five when you steal like the jets and it starts playing uh, uh, Highway to the Danger Zone. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. no. When you're, when you're driving around in Saints Row 2 and fucking the final countdown comes on your character starts fucking singing along to it 
Like it's that's fantastic. Man, I guess I need to play more Saints Row. Saints Row is some good stuff. Saints Row is cool. Saints. I play. It sounds like I should play Saints Row just for the musical, uh, the licensed music. <laughs> yeah, you, you play they it. Use for, it well. Oh God! All right, Prince of Persia, Warrior Within had a Godsmack song. What? Oh my oh god, god, I forgot about while that. While you were like during gameplay? I think yeah, while you were being there was a scene where you were being chased. Ooh. My god. All right, so, uh Weird. final question this week from our supporters on Twitch comes from Beck. What quote clutch moments have you had in games recently, if any, and do you practice any techniques to keep calm during stressful moments? <laughs> Difficult boss fights, multiplayer versus game multiplayer versus games, uh, or just crazy hard games like Super Meat Boy. The the fucking radiance and, and Hollow Knight. Y'all not y'all saw yeah, how that yeah, went. Yeah. I was very vocal about my experience with there, and I will tell you this: when I finally got to that point, there's a point at the end of that fight where you're cl- jumping up the platforms to uh-huh. get deliver the final blow, uh-huh. and he's throwing shit at you. Yep. And I was like, if I take one hit here, I will be di- I will die, and I will throw my switch into the wall. Like it'll be done. And I got to the very top. I dodged something by like the smallest margin, and I delivered the final blow. And I sh- like I verbally was like, oh. Like very loud, just like very like I can't orgasm. I, yeah, gallons was, of semen. So much semen. <laughs> so much semen. Is that the name of this show? Oh no. my god, I'm just gonna call it the Gallons Show. You know, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna call it the Booty Patrol Show. But <laughs> you know, anyways, hmm. I'm also very much looking forward to having clutch moments in Days Gone when I fight a horde. Clutch that final, moments. that final ascent in Celeste was just like mm. I feel like clutch moment after. Yeah, clutch moment. That's that's a good one. Any kind of any kind of platformer like that that that's that's quick and you know kind of not, not twitch kind of almost twitchy. Yeah. Uh, so Celeste is a good example. Uh, what else? Hmm. I'm trying to think. Like I'm thinking back to a story I had with my friends when uh, Capcom had just put out the demo for Resident Evil Four. Yeah. With the initial start of the game with the village. Mm-hmm. and how that was longer than the actual village sequence. So we're playing this, and they spawn the chainsaw guy. As they do. And yes. we go into the two-story building, we're like holding out, and we're just desperately trying to keep everybody out, and we can hear the chainsaw guy coming upstairs behind us, but we don't know how far back he is, because, you know, it's just stereo. And so, I will say his comment was recently, but okay. Okay, well, <laughs> and, and, I, and we all hear him just rear back and go, and he's just about to come down with the the chainsaw. And my friend who was playing, he pressed the button for jumping out the window at just the right time. And it, we just, we all those green, those moments are, I feel like I had something similar to that happen when last time when I replayed Resident Evil four for this series run that I was doing. Cause even to this day, the fucking chainsaw sequence in the village makes me fucking really tense. Yeah. But you know, you have to like, if you've played it before, you kind of, you know, you have to, bide your time until they're like they're coming in through mm-hmm. the sides and up the stairs that because that way when you jump out there won't be as many people down there yeah it's that's a great fucking video game so good um i'm trying to think of what i've played recently at all like <laughs> that's had like clutch moments. i haven't had too many clutch moments yet this year yeah. although resident evil 2 the remake i'm sure had quite a few moments uh clutch moments with the with and, uh mr x i don't Nick have and any... i had some playing resident evil 6 <laughs> yeah that's a yeah, I've had clutch some clutch was that clutch or just fucking fire? Yeah. So when, when shut are, up, Brad. When are y'all gonna finish that game? Never. Yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. That was a knee jerk reaction when, when I when time the knee jerk answer I just had. But y'all only did one scenario. Uh, no, four. we didn't even finish the one scenario, yeah, and I did, like oh I can't even tell you. Like over, I yeah, how many how many at we, we I, tweeted over two nights, right? Yeah, I told yeah, myself. So like, I told like myself. I was like, this, "This time will be different. I will finish it's, all four campaigns." And the second time, the first time I played it, I actually finished one of the campaigns. This time, I couldn't even make it through that same campaign. Couldn't do it. I think I'm done with that game. I don't. I don't really have any kind of calming stress like stuff to help me kind of keep my cool when I'm playing. I just wait until I feel like I'm about to throw something, and then I'm like, I'm gonna get stop now for a while i, I do i, I do have do. a tendency to kind of like tw- grip crush my things with your really, hands grip my controller really tight and kind of twist it a little bit just to kind of make the controller hurt that's why i put not- tape on my controllers when i bring them over because <laughs> it's not listening to me uh i don't know good questions though i yeah. i put on uh sunset heroes from the god hand soundtrack. there you go there we go uh right. so yeah that's all the questions from our uh patrons on patreon 
and our supporters on Twitch. We appreciate uh, each and every one of yeah, you and ev- your questions. Yeah. Every week we post a thread on uh, Patreon where you can ask us any questions you want as long as you donate $1 or more. Or if you support us uh, via Twitch, uh, you can post those questions in the supporters channel at discord.gg slash player. Yes, sir. And now it is time to wrap up the show with the four-player minutes. Brad, <clears throat> yeah, start us off. What's the four-player minute, Nick? Hype, sweat, thank you, fuck you. You nope. know how this works. Nope. This week, I got all sweats. Dude, I have all sweats this week, sweats. too. Sweats. Oh, shit. I'm sweating <laughs> so bad. Our sweats are probably not the same. Though. Probably not the same. <clears throat> My f- you should just write down a Look, exactly. Brad, sweat, 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 sweat. Nice. My first sweat is going to go to Bloodstain until that releases it's a sweat. Uh, for me, for reasons I've talked about in the past, I'm, I have not been impressed by what I've seen or played of that game. Uh, my sex second sweat, I don't know if we talked about it when it was announced, but Bloodlines 2, uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, uh, <laughs> they have a lot to, to do to prove to me that they could make a proper sequel to that game. Um, I'm a little skeptical of some of these, you know, like, hey, we're bringing back some of the original guys, and it's going to be great. We'll see. But you know what? Deus Ex mm-hmm. pulled it off, and that was the unthinkable. So True. Uh, <clears throat> my next sweat is for Judgment. You know, I like the Yakuza games. I really do. Um, but I'm a little worried that this one might lean, since it's not, you know, a traditional Yakuza game, too much into the stuff that, like, seems like a cool idea, but in practice it might be a little frustrating. Like, I played the demo, and, you know, like, the telling people and, like, the mm. investigating scenes mm-hmm. seems like a cool idea, but it might not actually be that fun to do over and over again. We'll see. I'm still very excited. I'm still going to play it. But it's a sweat. And my, and my final sweat is going to be for the new Fire Emblem game, just because... the. Fire Emblem Fates was really not working for me and Fire Emblem Waking I like but you know it didn't not not to the same extent that I love some of the the older older ones so I'm a little worried that it's going to lean a little too much towards you know the waifu stuff the stuff that I'm not as much in love with than uh you know some of the stuff I really like from that series so that's sort of like some upcoming sweats some summer sweats the summer Sweats for me, the if summer you will. sweats. The good old summer sweats. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Nolan. Uh, my four play minute starts now. Uh, my first sweat <sighs> is for Days Gone. Uh, I was pretty. I was looking forward to that game when that first everything came out about it. It seemed like it was gonna be fun. Now that it's out and I've heard some things and I've seen some gameplay, uh... I feel like you're the only one who's gonna convince me to play that shit. Like Crispy plays, it like oh I really like it. I'm like yeah whatever Crispy. You just like the lore. Nick plays and like yeah whatever. You just love fucking Assassin's Creed. I am literally whatever. sitting right here. But like, <laughs> but like you have no like, you know, horse in that race. If you like yeah. it. I feel like you can actually convince me to pick it up. That's it. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up. That's what you're saying? I have a horse in that race? Yeah, yeah, I think you have a horse in that race. You've been hyped for that game from the beginning, man. I mean, I don't know if I'd call it hyped. I wasn't. My mean. second sweat Sorry. goes to Katana Zero. Um, I did buy that on my Switch, uh, and I kind of started playing. I didn't get super far into I it. I don't really love it. but yeah. Did you finish know. it? No, I didn't. It's a very short game. Okay. Uh, my third I'll sweat... Uh, goes to another Switch game I wanted to buy, Steam World Quest. Uh, but now that that's kind of like, mm, I watch don't know. some videos. I yeah, don't know. I, I'll, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, it's one of those things where I'm like, do I want to waste the time on what potentially could be very enjoyable, or do I want to just be like, Meh, play more Binding of Isaac? I think uh, you might like it if you like the story and stuff from like Steam World Heist. I think mm. there, there's a, there's stuff to like here. I promise. Yeah, music, uh, really which good. leads to my fourth sweat. Which is my Switch, um, not because I don't enjoy it, uh, but because one of the main times I played it was, uh, you know, before bed because I have my little like arm, so I lay in bed and I play it. And lately, I've been laying in bed and like immediately going to sleep, yeah. which means I haven't been playing my Switch at all. Yeah. Uh, and I, I honestly thought about it the other day. I was sitting at my computer and I was like, "What should I play?" And I was like, "I should probably play some Katana Zero, but my Switch is downstairs, and I'd have to go down there and get it and bring it up here, or I could just." play Binding of Isaac and that's how I ended up playing Binding of Isaac this weekend Son of for a like bitch. four hours my anyway. fuck you the week goes to Binding of Isaac <laughs> that game is so good Nick fuck I know, you I'm sorry well, Chris Davis well fuck you guys I've got nothing but hypes this week my first hype Easy way is for E3 this year we're only 
a month away. A month away from like next Wait, generation are? announcements, from yeah. fucking showing off potential fucking consoles going you on. You think we're going to get that but, at E3? But exciting but, stuff. How is Sony going to show off the PS5 at E3 if Do they we, aren't at E3? I don't give a shit about what the system looks like. I give a shit about what it's capable the of. Question but they're is, not going to announce it because they're not going to fucking be well, there. Well, they might They might do something. They'll do it. They'll do a PlayStation just, Direct. It just means Whatever. they won't be there, which All means... All I care about is software. Which means anything that they announce at during the E3 thing means, oh, it's a reason to be excited, but people who are at E3 won't be able to play any of it. We're going to hear about games like fucking... Uh, back for blood. We're gonna hear about back for blood. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry, I was like, I was like, what the fuck is back for blood? I remember now. I got gotcha. you. I'm on the same page now. Continue. I want to see the new Animal Crossing. To be quite honest, it's it's time it's time for Nintendo to really surprise us with a new. Oh man, per- thing. Persuade. What if this is the the well well maybe not Metro. Persuade Prime, in but... chat reminds me this is our first E3 with that Reggie. Oh, whatever. That's sad. Okay. My second hype he was goes fine. for a movie, uh, Godzilla, Godzilla King of the Monsters. King of the Monsters. The of the <laughs> month. Yeah. I'm so hyped. You're so I, close. I went to see Avengers on Monday, and I had swore that I was not going to watch. I was on media blackout for this film. I saw the first trailer. I was like, nope, not watching anything else. Not seeing any things. I blacked out my timeline. I'm good. And they showed the, the final trailer. I was like, Fuck yes, this movie looks so good. You could Why have wa- you watch it. You could have watched, at, walked out of the theater. No, you could just go. Nom, nom, no, nom, I. Nom. I mean, it's. I just no. Oh man, I was just gonna deal with Robin it, was so. so Robin was so annoyed because she was like, she was like, I was like, they're, they're gonna show trailer for like Spider Man or something. And you're gonna have to leave, and she's like, no. We make it all the way to the end of the trailers, and then they start playing the Star Wars trailer. And she's like, ah. And then you could tell she's like, I don't want to get up and leave because like she had her the recliner up or whatever. Yeah, like, put did everything she just down. Close yeah. Her eyes? Well, she she because you know you can't you really can't block out the sound. So, but she decided like in a split second to be like, fuck it, I'm just gonna watch it. And then she started watching it, and like within 15 seconds, you could just see her face, just like I've made a mistake. Why am I watching this? <sighs> My third hype is for a game I actually found out about today. It comes out next week. It's called Snakey Bus. The idea is that it's a cross between the classic game Snake and Crazy Taxi. You're driving a bus around a city, and for each passenger you pick up, the bus gets longer and longer and longer. And so you're constantly driving through the city trying to dodge the other parts of your bus That's Crazy Taxi clever. style. That's it's a pretty three, good is concept. It's all 3D? It's all 3D, hmm. and it looks to draw inspiration from, like, Cluster Truck. Hmm. And I love Cluster. It also sounds a little like Noby Noby Boy. <laughs> I mean, who knows? So it looks, sounds it looks interesting. pretty good. Comes out next week. So, And my fourth hype is for this weekend. I'm getting together with Skyliner and Kenton and possibly Thorax, maybe one other person. And we're going to hook up Hamachi to Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. And we are going to play multiplayer. We're going to play Spies versus Mercs. And we're going to be doing the co-op missions. I am... So looking forward to I haven't played Chaos Theories multiplayer in 10 years. And this so excites me. Well, this that's, sounds so you're good. Hook up that's a hibachi? <laughs> hibachi. Did you say a hibachi? Yeah, the hibachi grill. You, you've heard of Tungle? Okay, it's it's like Tungle except it's Stop it making up words. Like excellent Kai or whatever. It's it's a it's a networking service that lets you play system active system link. Don't oh, yeah. worry, the community has figured it out. There is a way to do it. I am so excited for this. And this is the beauty. This is the beauty of Discord and communicating with the community in Discord. Exactly. Wonderful. That's exciting. Thank you, Chris Davis. Is it my turn? Yes. Yes. All right. Four. I've got three hypes and a thank you. My hype. My first hype goes to. I'm gonna be honest. I'm really looking forward to playing more Days Gone. I'm probably gonna end up playing a lot of it this weekend. I'm very much looking forward to having my first encounter with a horde. Because I've run into some smaller hordes and it's terrifying, and I'm just I'm really nervous about running into like hundreds of these things at once. It's gonna be really, it's gonna be as as someone else put it in one of our questions earlier, clutch. It's going to be clutch. Um, have Have you seen any of World War Z? A little game? bit, a little bit. You should you should look at the hordes in there. They're no, just like in the film. I, you're right. I'm. I, we're talking it, hundreds. It's just a different type of game. I'm, yeah, I'm, it, it is. It's, but... you know, I like this because it's open world and you can just be exploring and like picking flowers. And all yeah. of a sudden, it's like, oh look, there's 50 zombies. I need to run. 
I forgot to mention that earlier. I was like, I ran out of gas in the middle of the street, and I ran over and grabbed a gas tank, and I was filling it up, and I looked down the street, and I just see this horde come out of the, the woods and start running down the street towards me as I'm filling up the gas tank, and I'm just like, that was clutch. I, for, I should have mentioned that. There that was go. clutch. It I, was terrifying. I saw a video of a guy who he went up to a cave and zombies were coming out of it. And he was hiding in bushes, like, right next to the cave. And next to the bushes was, like, a lake, so the zombies couldn't cross. So they were just walking past him. Oh, Jesus. And there was, it was a there whole was like of them? 200 of them. Yeah, that's that's fucked up. Uh, my uh, my, my second hype is going to be for Final Fantasy IX. I've been playing it on my Switch. I fucking love that game. It's so good. It's so good. I can't wait to play more. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. And my last hype... Um, is for two movies coming out in, in in March that I'm or May that I'm very excited for. Uh, John Wick Chapter Three comes yes. out in about oh, a week yeah. or week and a half, two weeks. Did you get uh, your whiskey glass? Got tickets in my whiskey tumbler. I'm very fucking excited. Um, and the second one, I'm not sure how great this will be, but I'm excited for the new Aladdin. I think it looks pretty good. Okay. Pretty excited. But mostly, I'm hyped for these movies because it'll help cure my my unending sadness from the Avengers. That movie hit me in a pretty emotional way, and like the to the point where like the next day I was like, I was like I feel like I'm in mourning, <laughs> like this is I feel sad. I was like I also feel like extremely happy, also very sad. I was like I didn't expect the Avengers to have like an emotional hit, impact on me, but it totally did. But tune uh, in this Saturday to find did out. Did Game why. of Thrones have an emotional impact on you? I mean. My fuck you for this week goes to Nick for retweeting actual clips from the <laughs> most climactic scene from the series up to this point. Hey, man, that shit was... Less than a day after it aired. Dude, that shit was all over my feed. All Just because it's my... on your feed doesn't mean it's on other people's feeds. Hey, man. Until you retweeted it. Sorry. Yeah. I... I'd have been pretty upset if I had not watched that episode. Nobody nobody until just now... Game of Thrones. Nobody until just now vocalized... Yeah, because they probably all blocked you. <laughs> like, fuck this asshole. Sure. It's Follower account just went down. Uh, thanks for taking the wind out of my sails there. <laughs> so, uh, fuck you, Brad. Uh, <laughs> that's my four-player minute. Hey, fuck me. Don't fuck me. That's his wife's job. Yeah. Yeah. That's our show. <laughs> Oh my god. Thank you guys very much for listening. Uh, Again, reminder, next week's podcast will be on Tuesday, so we'll have another show here in about four or five days, and that's going to be for the next uh, four weeks. We'll be doing shows on Tuesday, and then we'll get back to our normal Thursday schedule, so we'll be sure to remind everybody in Discord and Twitter and all that good stuff. If you want to join our Discord, it's discord.gg slash fourplayer. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash fourplayer, and of course you can find all of our podcast episodes over at fourplayernetwork.com. Uh, don't forget to tune in on, I think, probably Saturday night. I'll let everybody know for sure when we have the time nailed down. Saturday night, we'll be doing our four-player plus where we talk about the Avengers and go into all the spoiler territory that we can't really go into here. Um, should be a fun discussion. And if you are a supporter on Patreon, if you want to get your questions or theories or whatever, and before we record that episode, you have until Saturday to do so. Pretty much any thoughts, any theories, any questions you have makes for good conversation. So leave it in mm-hmm. the, in the comments there. And, um... Yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and we will catch you guys next week. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.